Good morning, football fans. We are broadcasting live from the East Campus Stadium on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, where today it will be the RPI engineers hosting the Hobart Statesman in Liberty League football action. My name is Kurt Stutt. I'm here with the NC Roy. We're going to bring you all the action live today on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. RPI coming into this game within four, with a, I should say, a four and two overall mark, coming off two league wins against Rochester and then Buffalo State. Hobart State's been coming into today three and two. They are 0-1 in the conference. They had a bye last week. They were off, but the week before, they lost their only conference game. That was to Ithaca, 31 to seven. So, Hobart coming in with a losing streak of one, well, if, if you call it a streak, and RPI coming in with a two-game winning streak. So before we get to today's game in very sunny Troy, and unseasonably warm also here in Troy, before we get to the game, I talked to RPI engineer head coach Ralph Isernia before today's game, and let's give that a listen. Okay, coach, we're before the Hobart game, but first, uh, let's take a look back the last three weeks. Uh, the St. John Fisher game, a 3 nothing loss. Did you leave the field thinking we should have won this game? Um, yeah, <laughs> the simple answer, yes. Uh, you know, we've made, um, uh, you know, we've made uh, enough mistakes to, uh, to last the entire football season. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it was frustrating calling the game. It was frustrating, um, you know, for our players. Um, you know, we, we didn't execute. We missed a bunch of throws. Um, you know, <laughs> there were a number of things there. You know, we certainly played you know well enough on defense to win and only giving up three points um and i thought uh, you know really there in the end is uh you know the first team to score a touchdown is going to win the game and uh, really really thought we had a little bit of momentum right before that last drive uh, to get down the field um we just didn't make the right reads we had some receivers open and um you know, weren't able to hit them. And in a game like that, um, you know, all it takes is, is one play. And, um, you know, we weren't able to make it. So, you know, moved on to, to the next week and into league play. Okay, then two games in league play, uh, two wins, convincing wins. Uh, happy with mm -hmm. the performances there? Uh, I was. I was, and, you know, especially coming off the, the Fisher game. Um, you know, we needed to, uh, you know, put together some performances that were, uh, you know that were uh, you know, that were team wins, and I think you saw that on offense, defense, and special teams um, in those two games. And um, the uh, you know special teams unit um, was able to um, uh, you know was able to swing uh, field position, 
in the Rochester game and, um, you know, have Rochester play with long field. They, they had a, a very dynamic running back. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that if they were going to drive, they're going to drive the entire field. Um, so uh, defense uh, did a great job in the Rochester game and, and getting turnovers and offense did, uh, did a nice job of, um, of converting those turnovers into points. And when you do that, that, that really, you know, that really hurts, uh, you know, hurts the other team because those are, you know, bonus possessions that you're getting. Um, and so you're getting bonus points. And, uh, you know, we're with us, you know, they weren't necessarily a short field, but, uh, you know, offense was able to drive and, and put some, uh, you know, put some, some really good drives together and, and um, uh, really put the game away. And then Buffalo State last week, a continuation of the Rochester game, basically? Uh, there were, you know, obviously there were there were two different teams. Um, uh, you know, I'm not sure if, if you know, you know, we've never won at Buffalo State. Um, uh, you know, we've only played, I think we only played there uh, once. Uh, but, um, you know, it was important for us to, to get a lead, get out ahead. Uh, Carlos Davis had an interception return for a touchdown. Um, and, uh, you know, halftime it was 14-7, and then we put some drives together in the second half. Uh, had another interception uh, there in the second half, actually two more interceptions in the second half on defense uh, that produced some short fields for the offense who were able to convert um, those turnovers uh, in the points. And, you know, those are the, the last two weeks, I think those are the things that uh, have been very encouraging for us is, is when the defense gets – you know, gets the ball, gets those those free plays, gets those turnovers. Um, the offense is able to capitalize on that and get points off of those turnovers. Um, and then, especially taking taking advantage of a, of a short field. Special teams has been um, has been really solid in uh, in producing field position and limiting our opponent's field position. That'll be very important this come up uh, this upcoming weekend. Yeah, I was going to say now, Hobart. Uh, this has been a tough. Please game. welcome the engineers. Yes. <laughs> How do you see this one going? Yeah, um, you know, uh, you, when you watch Hobart on film, uh, Hobart is still Hobart there. Um, you know, they've got the same types of players. They get the same uh, the size, the same uh, you know strength and speed. Uh, some of the names may have changed. Uh, they have two very dynamic running backs uh, who are back again for this year. Um, you know, one has played a little bit limited, but I expect to see both of them on the field, even though they're not listed, but I do expect to see both of them on the field uh, and probably at the same time, both playing running back, uh, if not both playing running back at the same time, one probably splitting out at a wide, wide receiver position. So, um, you know, it, that hasn't been released, but I think, uh, I think we'll, you know, we are expecting uh, them to play. Once again, good uh, afternoon, football fans, so, and welcome. Um, the you know, East so Campus it's, it's Athletic same, Village and the um, East Campus like Stadium the same types of guys, the same, for this uh, same afternoon's teams, Liberty uh, League contest you know, between the statesmen of Hobart some, College uh, of and your engineers of Rent Salier. And now let's meet the starting offensive unit for the engineers. At left tackle, number 73, Danny Beckenhus. The left guard. Number 70, Rick Denbuski. Uh, right now, At center is number 51, Thomas Olison. Um, you know, you always worry about that. At right guard, number 62, Aiden Montero. At right tackle, number 68, Luke Koshel. The tight end is number 10, Shane Allison. The wide receivers for the engineers, number four, DJ Palmer. Number one is Sterling Walker Sutton. And number zero, Gil Goldsmith. At running back is number five, Dylan Burnett. And at quarterback, number 19, Jake Kazanowski. You know, two of the, the rest of the engineers and their head coach, Ralph Vicernia. Um, um, you know, this weekend, so, um, you know, the team that makes the, the you know, yeah, it, it's no secret, the team that makes the fewest mistakes is is, is most likely going to win, but you're going to see, you know, swings in field position, and, and uh, if you can force the other offense to uh, to play the long field and, and drive the field, 
Um, you know, that usually is a recipe for success. Okay, good luck against Hobart, Coach. All right, thank you. And we are live here once more at the East Campus Stadium on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, where we are nearing the start of today's game, Liberty League action, RPI versus Hobart. Kurt Stutt, Yancey Roy on the call for you today. And for these two teams, for RPI, Yancey, want to keep on the streak, get a third league win for Hobart. In terms of their league, kind of a must win at this point. Got a loss to Ithaca and can't take two losses in this league. Yeah, I mean, we're, RPI is hitting the, the, the meaty part of the schedule right now. This four-game stretch down to the end where they're playing the best teams in the conference, uh, starting with Hobart. Of course, they got uh, Ithaca, St. Lawrence, and Union after that. You know, RPI off to a 2-0 start. The visiting team, well, look, frankly, the they beat the teams who were expected to be at the bottom of the Tales standings, Buffalo the State and Rochester. But now it gets a lot tougher. It is hedged. And they're playing RPI Hobart. And gosh, top. isn't it always a white knuckler when these two RPI teams get together? To um, One-point games, overtime games. Uh, it's something like over the last uh, 17 RPI years, I think there's been at least six or seven games that were decided half. by three points or less. Hobart. It's always a tight contest between we'll these two. The opening kickoff. And um, the engineers I think as you come in today, what you might be looking Benzo. for is a lot of defense. Uh, RPI has certainly and now, been carried by its defense to honor and through respect the first our half country. of the season. And, the men and, women and who have for those not familiar with Hobart, they have a pretty America. tough defense as well. We They're only allowing 100 yards rushing. Your hats. Uh, as the RPI pep band plays the national anthem um, of the United States of America. They have a balanced attack, passing and uh, rushing. They're led by their quarterback, Dave Krusen, who's a veteran who's been there a long time. Other things to point out, Kurtz, and look for as we get ready for the kickoff. So maybe the numbers to keep in mind, time. Hobart is generally speaking a lot better than RPI on third down conversions offensively. They've done a lot better than the engineers on that. They've also done a lot better in protecting their own quarterback. They've only allowed three sacks for the season. Uh, RPI has, I believe, allowed 18 so far into this season. Um, but at the same time, RPI much more uh, uh, much higher total of sacks, defensive sacks, and also a much more ball hawking secondary. Uh, engineers with 12 interceptions over six games, which is a really impressive title. So, I rather number. So again, it should. We're fully expecting it to be another tight game as these two always seem to play. Oh, one other thing to point out: common opponent. They only have one so far this year, and that was St. John Fisher. RPI lost to St. John Fisher three to nothing, while Hobart defeated the Cardinals 17 to nothing. So they had the coin toss before the National Anthem. I believe Hobart won the toss and they elected to take the ball. So it'll be Merrick kicking off for RPI. It'll be RPI going right to left, Hobart left to right across your radio dial in this first quarter. Reminder, this is WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. Kurt Studd and Yancey Roy on the call for you today. Boswell and Farrell are expected back. Looks like that is the duo back waiting for this kickoff. Merrick sends a low kick. It's taken by one of the up men at the 22-yard line to the 25-30, and he's going to get pushed down just after he crosses the 35-yard line. That was, I think that was Drew Walsh. Yeah, Walsh on the return for Hobart. So pretty good field position for the Statesmen as they started their own 36. Uh, as you mentioned in the open, kind of unseasonably warm, about 59 degrees here at kickoff. It's going to steadily warm up through the three hours of football, probably go up another 10 degrees. Uh, Hobart in the road uniforms, white jerseys, orange numbers, orange pants, orange helmets with the H. RPI with the black helmets, black jerseys, white numbers, and white pants.
First and 10, Hobart at their own 36 yard line, just underway, no score here in Troy. One back, two wide outs to the right, one to the left, got a tight end on the right. Cruson's going to hand off on first down. Boswell takes the carry, and Boswell is stopped at the 38. So he's going to pick up two on first down. Nope, that's not Boswell, pardon me, that is Denham. There's two featured, well, actually three featured backs. Tim, Tim Denham, Jr., number two. He's a junior, 5'10", 205. He's their main ball carrier, 322 yards rushing on the season. Andres Duran also gets a lot of the work. He has 159 yards coming in. Second down and nine, they'll call. It's really eight when you look at the field for Hobart. And they'll go to Denham once again, and he's going to get stopped short of the 40. So a gain of almost two yards. It'll be, it'll be just about, we'll call it third and six, or almost at the 40-yard line. And here's where we mentioned in the, the pregame that Hobart is a pretty good number of third down conversions on the year, 46%. Um, meanwhile, the RPI defense is holding opponents to just 28% of its conversions on third down. Third and six at the 40-yard line, two receivers right. Or two receivers left, one to the right. We're going to stay on the ground again to Denham. Denham's at the 40 to the 45, and he will not get a first down. I think his, I think his arm fell right on the 45-yard line. They won't give him that much. They'll give him the 44, but not enough for a first down. Fourth and two, and Hobart is sending out the front team. And the yard marker guys, no, no, no. They moved. You can't. It's fourth down. <laughs> a little anxious there. Um, C.J. Lyons, number two, the cornerback, uh, coming down and hitting Denham right on the thigh there as he was trying to get around the corner and it looked like he might have a chance to get a first down but a nice tackle by Lyons to stop him short. So the ball's on the 44 and Hobart on the first possession with two minutes into this first quarter, no score. Hobart on their first possession will send out the punt team. So Vincent Lyon, Vicente, pardon me, Lyon back to punt. Low kick, spirals, hits at the 28. Walker Sutton's going to let this one roll. It takes a Hobart roll. They're trying to wave the ball for their long and it goes at the 10 yard line. So it didn't look good coming off his foot, but for Lyon, it ends up being a good kick down to the 10 yard line. RPI takes it there. Yeah, yeah, 46 yards net there. Um, 18 of it, <laughs> the last 18 of it on the roll. So RPI is gonna start out deep in its own territory. And Jake Kazanowski, who has taken over the starting quarterback for the Engineers, now out there for his first possession. Engineers first and 10 at their own 10. 12.39 to go, first quarter, no score. Engineers putting Hobart in a punting situation on first down. Burnett's gonna take the carry on first down. He's gonna get almost no yards as he ran to the right and Blake Hansen just followed him and tackled him. Both teams would like to establish the, the running game uh, this afternoon, but they're gonna be running up against defenses on either side that are pretty darn good at stopping you from running the ball. Let's call it a gain of two for uh, Burnett on first down. So RPI with a second and eight. You have two teams that are not giving up a lot of points this year. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Burnett's in the backfield. Handoff goes to Burnett. He's going to run right, gets across the 15, pushed by the defense on the tackle, and he gets out to about the 18-yard line. Sets up a much more manageable third and two for RPI. Yeah, a little bit of a break there. Probably knocked him forward for a good two yards. Tackle by number 42, Anthony Romano. Third down and two. So third and two for the Engineers. Hobart was a three and out. Can Hobart get a first down on their first possession? Sun is ducked behind the clouds, probably in the low 60s here right now in Troy. Snap. Burnett takes a handoff. He's out to the 20. I think he's got the first down. They're going to mark him at the 21. They're coming in at the 21, so this will be a first down for RPI. Just got enough. Dylan Burnett coming in as the engineer's leading playmaker on offense. 674 yards rushing. He's averaging almost six yards a carry, and he's got six TDs on the ground so far this year. First and 10 engineers at their own 21. 10.55 to go, first quarter, no score. Two receivers left, one to the right. Burnett in the backfield. Goldsmith now goes in motion. Handoff goes to Burnett. He's going to run up the middle, and he runs into a wall of bodies at the 23, and that's as far as he gets. 
again, no mystery about trying to get the running game going. That's four plays and four rushes by Burnett so far here in the first quarter. As we're just underway, we'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union. Five. They provide the funding for WRPI and all Number the club-related activity Ronaldo. of the Institute, and that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. Down, and WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org, and you pick up our broadcast. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, WRPI.org. Second down and eight. Kazanowski drops back, throws, looking for Burnett. It goes off his hands and bounces incomplete. RPI not able to do anything there on second down. Puts them in a third and long, third and eight. Tight end Allison getting off the field. No tight ends right now. Two wideouts each side. Burnett in the backfield. Kazanowski starting a quarterback is in the shotgun. RPI looking over to the sidelines. Now they'll get back and set. Maybe soon. Five seconds left on the play clock. RPI still moving around. Now they're ready. And they'll snap the ball. Kazanowski's looking left, sees nothing, looks right, throws, and it's in, it knocked away. Diallo had a hand on it, knocked it away from the intended receiver, and it's incomplete on third down, and RPI sends out the punt team. Well, he got a hand on it all right, but it was also thrown behind the receiver. There was no, uh, no, no chance for a catch there at all. I mean, there was a slot to maybe hit the guy, but Kazanowski kind of threw it a little bit too late and was behind the receiver. Uh, no chance to make a catch on that one at all. Burke back to kick for RPI. It looks like Lenz is waiting this kick. Lenz singles a fair catch and he's going to grab it right around the Hobart 41 yard line. Ten exactly to go here. First quarter, no score in Troy. Well, again, we're expecting another white knuckler between these two teams. Last time around in Geneva, uh, if you're Fans recall it was a 10-9 Hobart win, a uh, tense affair all around. And in a game where you're expecting low scoring and a lot of defense, you got to, of course, pay attention to field position. And right now, you know, it's favoring Hobart. They're going to start the second possession at the 41. Kind of just <laughs> both teams have punted so far, but the ball's moving a little bit more towards the RPI goal line. Crucian is behind his two backs, single receivers each side, tight end on the left. Crucian hands off to Boswell. Boswell goes left, and he gets forced out of bounds near the marker. Spencer Brockdorf, the first one to him to make the tackle, was assisted by others. I should say the line of scrimmage, not the marker. It wasn't your first down. It was about a yard. David Crucian is the quarterback for... Hobart, the running backs are Tim, Tim Denham Jr. and Rashawn Boswell. The wide receivers are Rain, Deranola, and Alex Labella. The tight end is Mike Zucone. The line is Ben Frank, Ethan Kowalski, De Devin Adamo, Cade. Pardon me, I'll get to that in a moment. On second down, uh, they'll return to Boswell with the run. He's going to go right this time, find some more room, and makes it out to the 48-yard line. So now a third and short, three yards here for the Statesman. Big play here early on in the first quarter. Third uh, down. Statesman get a first down. They'll be in the RPI territory and a little bit of momentum. So a little pressure on the defense here to make a stop. Kate Frucci and Kieran Paskowitz are the remaining members of the Hobart offensive line. Third down and three for Hobart at their own 48-yard line. Pass incomplete. The pass, yeah, it's, that's an incomplete pass. Boswell picked it up on a bounce, and I think the officials were waiting to see if that was a lateral or not. It was not. It was a forward pass, so it's incomplete on third down, and Hobart sends out the punt unit. They were trying to set up a wide screen to Boswell. Three men lined up on receivers lined up wide left. And it was set up perfectly. He had a, a lot of room, but you know what happened is Boswell just got in a little bit of a hurry and turned his head upfield before he completing the catch, and it slipped right through his hands. Lyon out to punt again, gets it away. Fair catch signaled by Walker Sutton at the 24. So RPI... Gave up the ball at the 20 when they headed at the 23 for the line of scrimmage. Gets it back at the 24 for their second possession. We have 8.32 to go here in the first quarter. No score, RPI versus Hobart. 
Yeah, you mentioned he just got a, the punt away. Anthony D'Agostino, number 33, sophomore linebacker, almost got his hands on that punt uh, for a block. So, and now it, may, and it makes me think, well, if they got that close this time, we should keep an eye on whether they try to put even more pressure on the punts as we go through the afternoon. First and 10, RPI at their own 24, no score. Turn around, hand off to Burnett. Burnett finds a little bit of room going off the right side, gets some more room, and he makes it out to the 30 yard line. Took what didn't look like was gonna be much and made it a gain of six. Second and four for the engineers. RPI with a second and four. They're gonna look to the sideline. Jake Kazanowski is the starting quarterback for RPI. Dylan Burnett, the running back. Wide receivers are DJ Palmer, Sterling Walker Sutton, and Gil Goldsmith. Tight end is Shane Allison. The line is Danny Beckenhus, Rick Domboski, Thomas O'Lawson, Adam Montero, and Luke Kochel. Second and four at the 30 yard line. Burnett with the carry again, gets at least two, Burnett made it out the to the 32. They might give him the 33 actually before he's pushed back. So RPI sticking to the ground on most of their plays, and they'll set up a short third and one. Tackled by. 42, Anthony Romano. Third down and one. Engineers one for two on third down conversions today. And they, on their previous possession, converted one third down, but then did not um, convert the second one. That was an incomplete pass, which led to the punt. Hobart moving their defense around. Two receivers on the right, tight end on both sides for RPI. Burnett in the backfield. RPI gives to Burnett, and there was no chance for that one. Who was who got in there for Hobart? There's a flag on the play. Was that Romano, Anthony Romano? Yeah, 42. Anthony Romano was basically in the backfield when he got the ball. Yeah, he was looking at Burnett all the way. I wonder if offside. maybe did someone jump Defense. off. Yeah, yeah well, that might be why he was there. Offside against Hobart. That'll be a first down for RPI. Because uh, he, was, he was in the backfield in no time, and, and the refs say, because he jumped Offside too soon. Penalty against so Hobart. first, uh, well, second first down of this afternoon for the engineers. This one on a penalty. Ball moves out to the 38-yard line. 7-0-1 to go, first quarter. No score in Troy. Uh, Burnett now on the sideline getting a breather. Buckley now in as the running back in the backfield along with Kazanowski. Lone receiver on the left, two on the right, tight end on the right. Buckley in the backfield. First and 10 RPI at their own 38. Turn around, hand off to Buckley, and he is stopped pretty quickly. Manexant. Number 20, Manexant Christian Buckley. On the tackle. Yeah, he and Romano come into this as their leading tacklers on the season. You know, Hobart, uh, you mentioned Coach Isernia saying that Hobart seemed to clone players through the years, a lot of similar types. They always seem to have a really strong linebacking core. Loss of two on the play on that rush by Buckley, second down and 12 for RPI. And, and following up on that, Monexit and Romano, two of their linebackers, their leading tacklers on the season, and they've been made a presence early here in this game. Kazanowski wants to throw on second and 12. It's gonna be in the flat to Buckley, and Buckley's gonna get pulled out of bounds near the line of scrimmage, so not much there for RPI. He was looking deeper, a little bit deeper down the field for uh, Palmer or Allison. They were covered, so he just went to the safety valve pass out of the right flat. Uh, but of course, the again, Monexent, the linebacker leading the charge for Hobart, closed the gap real quick to shut down that play. Call a gain of one. Third down and 11. Balls at the 37 for RPI. There has not been much today to talk about in terms of offense for either squad. That was the first pass completion, I believe. Kazanowski throws. That is complete. Burnett has it at the 40, 45, and that's, that's all. Stopped at the 45-yard line by Tafari Johnson. And RPI is going to send out the punt team. I would think they're that going to send out the punt team on what is fourth and three. Yes, they're headed out there. It's fourth and well, you know, that play was set up pretty well. Burnett, Burnett had two blockers in front of him, but Hobart, again, reacting the ball quickly. Among those, one of the linebackers, Jamin Bliss, 28, came in to help bring him down at the 45. Marcus Lenz is back at his 15, waiting for the kick. Burke 
high kick. Taken at the 16 yard line, lands to the 20. Uh, flag comes out, lands is down to 23. D'Agostino uh, among those on the tackle. 33. D'Agostino making his uh, presence known on some couple of special team plays already here in the first quarter. Let's see what this flag is. It was down on the return. I, I, I saw one of the Hobart blockers react in a During frustrated the return, way. Blocking the back, number yeah. 17. Blocking the back the against Hobart. And I figured it was going against him. One of the blockers, as soon as the flag came out, he kind of jumped up and down kind of in frustration, uh, figuring that he had been flagged for that. And of course it is going to go against the Statesman. So the now the field position shifting a bit here in the first quarter. I remember it was or RPI was pinned down at its 10 to start its first drive. Now first we're moving a little bit to the, the left, zone. if you will, a little bit more to the north end zone. And Hobart backed up all the way to its 11 to start this drive. Half the distance to the goal on the penalty. 424 to go, first quarter, no score. Gruson. Hands off on first down, and Denham is going to get all tied up. He'll make it out to the 15-yard line for a pickup of three. Tackled by number 23, Jimmy Ledlow. Hobart has attempted just one pass so far in the first quarter. That one was incomplete, so zero yards passing for Cruson and the Statesman right now. Two receivers left, one right. Tight end on the left. Running back is also the Cruson's left. So that is Denham in at the running back position right now. High snap. Cruson is looking left to throw. Puts the ball up in the air, and it's hanging out there a long time. We've got a flag. We've got a completion. Interception. Oh, interception. Pardon me. Interception. I forgot which color was which. Intercepted by Leblo at the 46, but there's also a flag on the play. And so I'm the not, flag came out before the interception. It did, and it did along the sideline, not where the pass was. So there may be some contact before the pass, or maybe um, perhaps stepping out of bounds, one of the receivers. Let's see. Here comes the call. Sideline warning on Hobart. Sideline violation against play, Hobart, so the interception counts. RPI with the first, gets the first turnover of today's game. They've got it at their own 45. 3.36 to go here in the first quarter. No score. Warning yeah, that Newsom was kind of going for the home run ball, but the, it kind of hung up there for a while. Jimmy and there was enough the time for it to RPI kind of become a jump ball between Andres Duran, number eight, the intended receiver, and Leblo, uh, one of the deep backs for the engineers. And number 23, Jimmy Leblo, the senior, with the interception. We mentioned RPI with a ball hawking secondary. That's 13 interceptions now already this season. First and 10 RPI at the 45. Kazanowski on play action. Gets rid of the ball before he's about to get hit. Looking for Goldsmith, and that's overthrown. In fact, Goldsmith didn't know where the ball was. He never, he never turned the look. The defender saw it, and he didn't even try for it. It was over his head. And that was running right down the middle of the field. Meanwhile, down the right sideline, I think, you know, Dean Ninche, number nine, had gotten behind his defender and had a step on him. If he, you know, Kazanowski had seen him on the right sideline, he was open. The Hobart defense, Kyle Spano, Alex Karpowicz, and Naz Johnson are up front. The linebackers, Drew Walsh, Anthony Romano, Peterson, Manexant, and Jamin Bliss. RPI on second down and 10 pass. That is complete. And that is Walker Number Sutton grabbing it for a first down at the 38-yard line. Number one, Sterling Walker Sutton. And it's the third completion, but the Game first one to really be thrown downfield. We've seen a, a screen pass and sort of a safety valve backfield pass. The first one to get some positive yardage down the field, sort of vertically down the field, if you will, for Kazanowski. And now engineers, the first down at the 43 and some momentum going. James Mahoney is one of the cornerbacks for uh, Hobart. He was on the tackle there, going with Chris Natumba. RPI sticks to the ground on first down, and Burnett. they will go down to the 39-yard line. As Burnett is in at running back right now. He makes it down to the 39. And to finish out that defense for Hobart, Jay McCoy and Blake Hansen are the safeties. 
No score here. 2.38 to go in the first quarter. RPI with a second and six and four, at the Hobart 39-yard line. Play clock down to 10. Three wide receiver formation. Allison's just offset a little. Kasanowski throws, gets rid of it. That is complete. Allison's got it at the 29, and he just couldn't get enough yards. He just couldn't get away from the defender, Walsh, to get another yard for the first down. So we'll set up a third and one. Nice read by Kazanowski to find Allison. He had pressure coming from one of the outside linebackers. Blitz on a blitz. RPI quickly snaps the ball, handoff to Burnett, and he's got the first down. He gets to the 30. So RPI gets the interception and now moving the ball. We have an injured Hobart player. That is Bliss, who is right now having trouble getting up. So we'll have a timeout on the field. 149 to go here, first quarter, no score, RPI versus Hobart. And the engineers again started this possession after an interception. Uh, taking over at their own 45 and now punching it down a couple of first downs all the way down to the 30 uh, with 149 to go in the quarter. Looking at some early numbers, the one that stat that jumps out at me so far, Kurt, zero Hobart first downs. So the engineers who have been led by their defense all year uh, off to a terrific start just bottling up the statesman's offense, they've not allowed a completed pass. They've already intercepted a pass. And again, zero first downs for Hobart so far here in this first quarter. We look at these two teams, RPI through six games is averaging, allowing 6.2 points per game, which is low. And if you double that, you got to go a little bit beyond the doubling to get to Hobart, allowing only 13.4, which is still low. Right. Bliss has helped off the field. We'll be back to action. First and 10 RPI at the Hobart 30. No score, 142 to go in the first quarter. And RPI switching up who's the quarterback. This is going to be a keeper. Number 14, Daniel Schuster. And he's not even on my cheat sheet. We'll be looking at here. As he scrambles for the roster himself. To yes. Uh, Daniel Schuster. Of nine. A freshman, 6'1", 190 out of Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, checking in for Kazanowski. He's still in. Uh, almost a wildcat. He's a quarterback, but it's almost one of those wildcat plays. It is. Snap and just head off to the right sideline. He's doing it again here. Yeah, RPI stacked the right side, and Schuster stayed in the quarterback, took the snap, and he's got a first down down to the 18-yard line. So the first run, if I wasn't clear on that, he made it nine yards down to the 21, and then the second one, they've got another first down. So and Schuster staying in again. Yeah, so RPI giving Hobart a very different look here. And, and, and quick snaps, not allowing them to adjust very quickly to what they're seeing at the line of scrimmage. It'll be first and 10 RPI at the Hobart 18 in the red zone. 40 seconds to go in the first quarter, no score. Now RPI is going to split Hughes out to the left. Schuster has trouble with the ball, loses it, and is covered by the statesman. And so RPI gives up a fumble. Big, big turnover there. Schuster had Number two strong runs to the right. This time he was going to go to the left, but what happened was on the recovery. he took off before he had the ball. Uh, the snap was to him. He hit his hand. It hit his hands, but his body and his head was already turning to the left to make the run, and he never completely possessed the ball. Clanked off of his right hand down on the ground, and he wasn't able to recover in time to make up for the fumble. And instead, it's the first turnover. For RPI, now turnovers are even, one apiece here in the first quarter, and still no score, probably here the last play of the first quarter. I think it was Jack Daly on the recovery for Hobart. Uh, the statesmen are going to run left on first Denham, down. Denham on the carry. Denham on the carry. Maybe yeah, two, two yards. Maybe two yards. Two yards, I was going to say, yes. And uh, 20 seconds, probably not going to be another well. snap. It won't be. Hobart's offense now heading to the sideline. So we're going to get into the first quarter. Here in Troy, no score, RPI and Hobart. Mistakes both ways. End of the first quarter. 
but nobody able to capitalize on anything. RPI with an interception. They were driving down towards the goal line and then fumbled it after they got into the red zone and gave Hobart the ball, which is where they have it now. So they get second and eight on their own 25 as the teams will switch sides. At RPI Athletics. Yeah, tough, tough break there for the engineers. They had a lot of momentum on that possession. Had uh, started at their own 45 and was inside the 20 when Schuster, after two good running plays, was going for a third straight one, but got a little anxious and took off for the left side before he had the snap from in the shotgun formation, fumbled it. Hopart recovers at its 23. And now the two sides switching. Hobart now will be going from right to left. No real win to speak of, maybe a little bit behind Hobart now, but nothing really that should make much of a difference. Again. RPI's defense is on the field, just to give you their lineup, Amanchi Conquo, Nate Sicard, and Josh Cohen are up front. CJ Schumacher, Cole McGrath, Joe Deptula, and Connor Noyes in the middle. CJ Lyons and Carlos Davis are the cornerbacks, and Spencer Brockdorf and Jimmy Leblow, who had the interception, they are the safeties. They gave up no first downs and only 21 total yards in that first quarter, the RPI defense. Start of the second quarter, Hobart going right to left, RPI left to right across your radio dial. This is a direct snap to Boswell, and he goes right, then heads up field, and he gets out to about the 31-yard line. On on yeah, wildcat formation there for Hobart as Boswell was lined up at quarterback and took the snap and off to the right side. Third down and two. So Hobart giving RPI some different looks. Kirsten oh. comes back into the game, I believe. Yes. Hobart looking at a third and two at their own 31. Two receivers right, one to the left. It's Boswell in the backfield. Kirsten will pitch to Boswell. Boswell has to get by. One man does. The second one can't make it downfield. He's pushed out of bounds at the 32. Out of bounds by two. Carlos, Carlos Davis, Davis got him out of bounds, and he needed to get to the 33. Leblow, the one of the safety men came crashing through and got to Boswell in the backfield, but Boswell got used the stiff arm to evade Leblo and avoid a loss and, and get one. right short of the first down now, fourth and one. And, um, you know, they might try to draw offsides, draw the engineers offsides, but otherwise you're not going to see them go for it on fourth down here in a game that you expect to be low scoring. You're not going to probably want to take a chance so deep in your own territory. Hobart had to get the 11th guy out there. They only had 10 for the punt team. And we've got a whistle. Was a timeout called? Whistle before the play ended. So the play doesn't count. I'm not sure. Was this a timeout? Doesn't look like it. There seems to be the referees going over talking on the other side of the field. You've got Ken DeWall, the head coach for Hobart over there. Things look like they're squared away now, so that play didn't count. Still fourth and one. Lion is back, and it's Hobart's in the punt formation. Walker Sutton to receive the kick. Kick goes to the 32, takes an RPI bounce, now a Hobart bounce, and it's going to roll to the 25, the 24. RPI will take over at their own 24-yard line. 13-15 to go here in the first half, no score. And we'll see if the engineers' offense can recover some of that momentum they had on that last drive. They had started at their own 45, got down to the 18, really chugging along before the fumble killed the drive. Best drive so far of the afternoon for either team. Now they're backed up, back in their own territory, all the way at the 24. First and 10 for the engineers, Kazanowski back in at quarterback. Single receivers each side, one man, two men in the backfield, actually. And RPI is going to hand off to Burnett, and Burnett, Burnett forward progress. Game. He's going to get pushed forward a little bit, and he's going to get stopped at the 26. Hobart has done a good job of 
bottling up Burnett in the run game so far. I mean, the engineers have been really trying to establish that. Um, but right now they've just got 13 attempts for 37 yards. That's not even three yards of carry. And they've been they've really been keying on Burnett as well. They know he's going to get the ball a lot. And they've got a lot of linebackers kind of just keying on him and crashing through the line as soon as the snap goes off. Second down and eight, Kazaknowski slings one along the sidelines. He was looking for Walker Sutton along the far sideline, but it was out of bounds, not catchable in the field of play, and it's incomplete. Yeah, a little bit behind and a little bit back shoulder. It was the far sideline, the left sideline, and, and Walker Sutton uh, saw it was behind him and tried to wheel around to see if he could be in any kind of position to make a catch, but it was well out of bounds. RPI in a third and eight. And what has clearly begun here in Troy is a defensive struggle. Two receivers each side. And RPI uh, just moved. It's going to be third and 13. There was a lot of movement on the Hobart side. They were switching personnel uh, left and right, kind of Both wide and, and tight. And Offense, number seven. I don't know if that was a distraction, but penalty. the right tackle on RPI moved ahead of time. Koshal. We'll move the ball back to the 21. A third and long just became third and longer. Third and 13 as RPI is back at the 21. Three receivers, man in the slot left, one running back. RPI is going to go to Burnett. Burnett to the 25 and Burnett gets tripped up as he went across the 25. Some results to the 27, but that's well short of a first down, and RPI will be punting. Gain of six. I believe that might have been Kevin Hughes, seven. number six, that was in on the carry that time for the engineers seeing his first action. Anderson Burton to punt for the engineers. But it'll still be fourth and long for RPI. So, uh, as we mentioned, this is going to be a defensive dominated game, and so punting is going to be critical how well you can move the ball down the field here. Burke, nice high kick, taken at the 32 and not getting any farther than that as Garrett came in and tackled Lenz before he had any chance to head upfield, and Hobart will have it at their own 32-yard line. 11.49 to go in the first half, no score. Yeah, that was Cortez Garrett. He's a freshman defensive back, 6'1", 185, out of Dameron, Maryland, and just made the dive at the receiver's ankles and held on to him to bring him down at the 32. Hobart first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. See if Hobart's offense can do anything. This is their fifth possession. Three punts and an INT on the previous four. They've got zero first down so far this afternoon. Cruson wants to throw. Puts it up along the far side and the defensive back and receiver Cruson's were really pushing at each other back there. It was Davis on the coverage. It goes incomplete. For number nine, yeah, Rain, Rain Daramola uh, was the receiver. The ball kind of hung up in the air. And Davis at first had his back to the quarterback but could read the receiver's eyes and saw that it was going to be underthrown. He wheeled around to get a look at it, made a diving attempt for an interception, uh, but the ball crashes to the ground for an incompletion. Hobart is not, don't only, not only not has a first down, but no completions, pass completions so far this afternoon. Second and 10 for the Statesman. Bruson looking left, sees nothing, looks right, pass. That is complete, and forward progress will actually lose them some yards. They'll be back at the one yard. They'll be back at the 31 on the forward progress. Joe Deptula, one of the linebackers for the engineers, read that play, came up quickly, made the stop at the 31. He's one of their leaders on defense. He was, if I'm not mistaken, one of the Liberty League Defensive Players of the Week last week. Did you see who caught the pass? He got hit so quickly, I never saw a number. I, I believe... Double check my roster here. I think that might have been number seven, Bartisic, but I have to double check again. Third down and 11, back at the 31 for Hobart. Cruson, hands off, Denham 
Goes right, and Denham's going to get stopped at the 29-yard line, and Hobart's going to punt again. Yeah, it was Bartasek, number seven on that, the one reception for a total of minus one yards. Fourth and eight from the 34-yard line. Lion out to kick. This will be punt number four. 39 yards a kick so far. Boots it away, close to getting tipped. Walker Sutton lets it roll out of bounds. RPI will take it at their own 30-yard line. 10 to go first half, no score in Troy. 35-yard punt, no return. One thing that's interesting RPI that takes over Lyon, the punter for Hobart, line. seems to be doing is just trying to keep the ball away from Walker Sutton on any kind of punt return. That one, he looked like he angled definitely to the left, got it to the left sideline earlier. He hit one to the right. Seems like they're kind of very conscientious of not giving Walker Sutton a chance to return a punt here. First and 10 RPI at their own 30. A game in search of a score. Kazagnowski throwing for uh, Walker Sutton, and he seems surprised by that, and it goes incomplete. Uh, you know, a mix up. Did Kazanowski deliver it a little too fast, or did Walker Sutton not turn around quickly enough? But like you said, he was, he was not turned around when the ball was on him, and he couldn't adjust in time to make the catch. Incomplete on first down. Second and 10 RPI at their own 30. Three receivers, man in the slot to the right. Kazanowski is out of the shotgun, running back next to him. And he's going to hand off to Burnett. Burnett's coming towards the sideline, and he's going to be down at the 35, 36. So we'll call it the 36 yard line. So a pickup of six to make it third and four. Tackled by Wind one. is picking up here in Troy. Uh, yeah, you might be able to hear it in the microphones. It's now coming from the Eight south, six. which means Third it's in RPI's face the here RPI uh, in the second quarter. They're moving left to right, which is north to south, if you're familiar with the field here on the Troy campus. Nine and a half to go here in the first half. All zeros on the scoreboard. Third down and four RPI at their own 36. Four wideout formation. Kazanowski looks left, right, left, over the middle, complete, and is it a first down? And yes, it will be a first down. Extra effort by Burnett. He got hit right near the 40, retreated one yard, and then is able to get free, gets a couple of yards, out to the 42, and it's a first down RPI. Yeah, terrific effort by Burnett, because it was Romano, one of the linebackers, who came flying in with a shoulder tackle at about the 38, but Burnett stayed on his feet and got the first down. Quick snap, Burnett with the ball, and he's going to go out of bounds, short of the 45 on the near sideline. Provenzano forced him out of bounds. Six first downs now for the engineers. None, and no first down so far in this first half for Hobart. Burnett now up to 41 yards rushing for the engineers. He leads all the players here this afternoon. Three receivers left, one right. Second and seven at the 45 for RPI. Different running back in there. He's going to take the pass completion. That is Ming. Ming caught it, and he only gets a yard. As Try Ming, to, Ming Ming's out to the 46. Yeah, trying to set up a screen there, halfback screen on the left side. But, again, Hobart's got a really good of one reactive on the defense. Their linebackers really five. see the ball and move quickly to the ball once it's in flight, and Ming had nowhere to go on that one. Daly in on the tackle for Hobart, and that'll make it third and six. Yep, that's right, third and six at the 46. Got a trips lineup on the right side, three receivers stacked. Kazanowski's looking in that direction, doesn't see anything. Now he's going to run the ball. He's got room. He's still across to the 50, to the 45, to the 40. Kazanowski runs out of bounds to the 35. That's a first down. Well, terrific read by Kazanowski. As we said, he had three wide receivers to the right, and that's where he was looking to go, and that's where the defense went, and it flowed that way as well. As soon as he saw it was stacked up, he just took off to the left, and he had 10, 15 yards of open ground before anyone got near him.
7.15 to go, first half, no score. RPI, first and 10 at the Hobart 35. They made it down to the 18 on a previous drive, but suffered a fumble. Unforced error that in that situation. Burnett takes the carry on first down and makes it all almost to the 30 yard line. Number five, Dylan, Dylan Burnett on the carry. So RPI picking up five. It's a gain of five on the play, second down and five. Allison, the tight end's on the right. One receiver on the left, two on the right. Burnett in the backfield for Kazagnowski. Now our RPI is going to look over to the sidelines. That's a, this is normal for them. You get lined up and then get unlined up. Five seconds on the play clock. Kazagnowski hands off to Burnett. Moves to his left. Can't get an opening, Man, though. Uh, it looked like there was a little bit of room there. And then it just got closed off. Peterson Monoxent. Again, we've said his name a lot already in this first half. One of the outside linebackers um, grabbing Burnett from the from behind Third down and three. to keep him from getting anywhere near the first down marker. RPI with another third down. Third and three. You got to think this is four down territory. Ball's on the 28 yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Kazignowski looking left, throws, intercepted! The receiver didn't even know the ball was there. Intercepted by the statesman. By one. And it looks to me like that was Diallo who picked that one off for Hobart. Hobart takes over so Diallo with the interception the at the 13 yard line of Hobart and RPI turns it over for the second time today. Yeah, Alessio Calcagni, 83, was the intended receiver. He got tangled up with Diallo along that left sideline and looked like he kind of, I don't know, lost his footing for a second and he never turned around for the ball, but Diallo had a read on it. He turned around and was right there, uh, right in his numbers to make the catch for the interception. So second time this afternoon that RPI has had a long, sustained drive, seeming like they're moving in towards the goal line and turn it over. Hobart on first down, flag comes out as the rush goes right and makes it out to about the 16 yard line. But I don't think this is going to count. Engineers have been the team that's certainly moved the ball a lot, a lot better on offense. Holding. Uh, two long offense, drives. 73. But both of them ending in turnovers. Oh. That is referee Lance holding Daffler telling us that it's a holding call against Hobart. This is to the goal. The ball Replay back. first down. So Hobart gets the down back, but the ball is going to go to the six yard line. We have 519 to go first half, no score. First down and another number that jumps out at you again, zero first downs for Hobart. Played a quarter and a half. It's a quarter and three quarters. Um, and they still have zero first downs. They only have 31 yards rushing and a total of minus one receiving yards so far. Statesmen have completed just one pass and that went for a loss of one yard. So a stiff wind right now here in Troy as Hobart has a first and 17. And handoff. That'll be deck to the two-yard line. Uh, that was Denham on the carry? Yeah, and C.J. Shoemaker, one of the outside linebackers, he was lined up on the defensive left, sort of offensive right, and he was just keying on Denham, and he was all over it. As soon as Denham got the handoff, there was nowhere to go. Shoemaker kind of coming over the top to make the tackle way back at the two. So now crucial play here. Second down for Hobart, backed up all the way at its two-yard line, Cruson lined up about five yards deep in the end zone. It's second and 21. Yeah, so Cruson's out of the shotgun, and he hands off, and Denham is able to get some yards. He'll get out about to the four, four and a half, maybe. Boy, Josh Cohen, 97, one of the front-line defenders, broke through the line and <laughs> probably had thoughts of safety on his mind there as he was chasing Denham in the end zone, but Denham got a block and got out 
to the four. Third down and 19. Third and 19 as the ball's at the four yard line. They need to make it out to the 23 for a first down. Two receivers left, one to the right. Person is in the end zone. As he is in the shotgun. Gerson wants to throw, gets the ball away, and it's overthrown. Intended on the near side for Deramola. But it's overthrown, incomplete, and fourth and 19 at the four. Hobart is going to punt. Hammering this point here in the first half, but it deserves to be hammered. Hobart, zero first downs so far in this ball game. Uh, they've completed one pass all day so far for minus one yards. And RPI now pinning them back, they'll have to punt. Line of scrimmage is their own four. The punter back in the shadows of the south end zone to receive this snap. Lion is about one yard in the field of play. High snap. He gets it, kicks it away quickly. He had to. He was under pressure. Walker Sutton allows the ball to bounce. It takes a Hobart bounce. Uh, it went from about the 46, maybe, of Hobart to the 43 of RPI. We have 326 left to go in the first quarter. RPI gets the ball back but no score. We know we should give almost a, if you were giving a first half MVP or you know, best player for each team right now, you'd have to consider Vicente Lyon, the punter for Hobart, as one of their best weapons. He's had a terrific game. He's been out there a lot and uh, he's almost had a couple of punts blocked. That time there was a high snap. He's standing you know, one yard from the in line. He gets off a quick kick. And he gets it all the way out across the 50 to the RPI 43. That's a, a terrific play by the punter, Vicente Lyon. First and 10, RPI at the 43. Burnett gets caught in the backfield. He's going down for a loss. Karpowicz got in there, grabbed him, and stops him at the 42 for a loss of one. Karpowicz on the tackle. Second and 11. So Second RPI and defense playing outstanding today. The problem, they don't have any points, the offense. We have turnovers, right? I mean, they've had two really good drives. One ended in a fumble, one in an interception. Uh, both times where it seemed like RPI had all the momentum and we're, we're ready to make the first score of the afternoon. Second and 11. Kazagnowski scanning the field. In trouble. Gets away from that, rolls to his left, still in trouble. Now he's going to go to the right, still running around out there. No flags. Kafnowski's going to run with it himself, and now he's going to step out at the 46. So he turns a lot of trouble into a plus three. Credit Kafnowski for staying alive. He almost looked like a Hobart defender had a hand on him not once, twice, but three times, and he was able to get away for a, a net gain on that. Also, terrific coverage in the secondary by Hobart. They had everyone blanketed. That's why Kazanowski had no one to throw to. Third down and seven at the 46 for RPI. Two receivers each side. Burnett in the backfield. Kazanowski wants to throw. Throwing into the wind. Pass. That is complete, but it won't be a first down. Taken by Ninchi. And he stopped at the 48. And it'll be fourth down for RPI. Jay McCoy, a senior free safety, one of their leading tacklers with a, a terrific play there to catch Ninchi. He was behind him and he dove and made, <laughs> grappled him around the knees or the ankles and brought him down at the 48. And so uh, RPI is going to have to punt it away back to Hobart. Going to be punting into the wind here. Yeah, so we'll see if that affects anything. If you're RPI, you want to get you want to punt, you want to snap this ball when there's one second left. You want to take as much time off the clock. Or, or maybe, maybe even take a penalty here? No, they're going to take a timeout. A oh, timeout, okay. RPI is going to take a timeout. Yeah, you want... Timeout, RPI. You've got, you've got the risk here of a, just a bad kick simply from the wind. Mm -hmm. For nothing else, just the wind might put you in a bad position, so you want as much time off the clock if Hobart gets the ball. RPI football would like to thank the following sponsors. Moe's, BSN Sports, Hilton Garden Inn. And a lot riding on this, Kurt. I mean, uh, you know, Madison like you say, if it's a Ginsburg bad punt. 
the Wexler uh, Alumni Association. Hobart conceivably can at least trip. take a shot downfield in the last minute here. If it's a really good punt, system. say you Yankee can trail. Hobart way Wexler back at, oh, I don't know, inside the 20 or inside the 10. Pepsi. You've got two timeouts Bryant left. Wade. Do you, if you're RPI, ball. do you then try to just stop the clock on each play and make something happen in the final second. So really, uh, it's, a, it's just a, in some ways just a punt, but there's a, there is a lot riding on this punt with just 121 to go in the first half and no score so far in this game. Burke back to kick, Lenz is at his 10 to receive, but with this win, I don't think it's gonna get to the 10. It has really picked up. It was non-existent when we kicked off here. Here's the kick and fair catch, 16. That was a good kick. Yeah, taken at the 16 by Len. So Hobart has it there with 115 to go. They've got the ball at their own 16-yard line. 41 yards into the win on that punt. At their own 16-yard line. So as Yancey was talking about earlier, it's possible the punters are the <laughs> most important players so far today. I, it, certainly for Hobart. I mean, again, their offense has been bottled up. No first downs, just one completed pass. And so with a minute 15, you would think they're just going to run out the ball, but I don't know. Maybe they take a shot here. Maybe, oh, look, we've got the running back lined up at quarterback. Yeah, Boswell, the ball goes past him towards the, the end zone. It's in the end zone and knocked out of the end zone. That's a safety. RPI takes a 2-0 lead. The snap went past Boswell. He tried to pick it up near the goal line. He had trouble with it, and at that point, the result is best for Hobart. At that point, because if he had picked it up near there, he might have been stopped at the one and they would have had to run more plays. Instead, it goes out the end zone. It's a safety, RPI with the two nothing lead. Well, let's break down that play in slow motion. First of all, what happened was, again, it's a wildcat formation where Boswell, the fullback, is back there to receive a direct snap. But you know what happened, Kurt? The snap was too early. He wasn't ready for it. He was looking to the left side of the line when all of a sudden, here comes the ball. And it kind of clanked off of his right hand uh, it started to roll towards the end zone, and at that point, well, you know, Boswell, unfortunately, the young man panicked a bit. He had time to pick it up and get out of the end zone. It, the ball was right at the, you know, about a yard below, or rather a yard into the end zone, and he had time to pick it up. But at this point, he was not looking down at the ball. He was looking at all these RPI right, defenders closing in on him, and he engineers. picked it up and he dropped it. And he picked it up again and kind of dropped Great it again. And by that time, the, the defense closed in on him, line. made a hit, and the impact of the hit just skidded the ball out the back end of the end zone into the shadows of the south end zone for two points. Probably the most fitting play of this entire first half where neither offense, well, certainly the Hobart offense, hasn't gotten anything going. It's been dominated by defense. And so fittingly, the first play is a safety caused by a mistake and a hustling defense. Yeah. So we may disagree a bit here. I think okay. <laughs> once, once the ball is at the goal line and loose, if you're back there, your best bet is to take the safety. I think that's what you should be doing. <laughs> uh, it may be. I'm just saying that he, he wasn't. What the, happened was he looked on. up. The kickoff goes back towards the end zone, and it just barely gets in the end zone for a touchback. So Hobart decided to, to kick from a tee and not do a punt from the 20-yard line with the wind, and RPI allowed oh, the ball. The Walker Sutton zone. allowed the ball to just to barely get to the end zone for a touchback to the 25-yard line. So that was the kickoff. We can we, we can talk about the safety. Yeah. No, I, I don't know that we're disagreeing. What I'm saying is that he... Uh, he had time to pick up the ball, and he was trying to pick up the ball. But what happened was, is you could see that his head was not down, his eyes were not on the ball. His hands were down, but his eyes were looking up at the RPI defenders, and that's why he failed to pick it up uh, one yard deep into the end zone. And by after he did that, the defense was all over him and crashed into him, and the ball skidded out of the back of the end, the end zone. I think if he had just looked down at the ball and, and picked it up, he might have gotten out of the end zone at that point. That's what he was trying. That's what he was trying to do. RPI, first and 10 at the 25. Burnett takes a handoff, goes left. Uh, tackled at the 31 yard line. We're going to hit one minute to go in this first half. And now RPI taking a timeout? No, Hobart is taking a timeout. Okay. 55 seconds left in the first half. Hobart takes a timeout. 2 0 RPI leads. You don't get to say 2 0 in football very often for a score. It's making me think about the baseball playoffs that are ongoing. Uh, well, this weekend, it's like a it's like a Yankees uh, Guardians game or something, or, or Phillies Braves. Yeah. It actually reminds me of the Jets game because All right. the Jets took We're a two nothing lead. Mm -hmm. They took a two nothing lead on Miami last weekend. That's yeah. right. 
giving and went on to give you long-suffering Jets fans a win. You don't have to put long-suffering in front of Jets fans. That's, <laughs> that's just assumed. Every, <laughs> everybody knows that. I, I'll walk around and see somebody with Jets paraphernalia. I don't have to think of long-suffering. I just know it. I don't even have to look at the face. I just know it. So Hobart took a timeout. Both teams have two timeouts left. 58 seconds they're going to put on the clock now. Not 55, 58. 2 nothing. RPI leads. RPI second and four at the engineer 31-yard line. Kazanowski fakes the handoff, puts the ball up in the air, looking for Walker Sutton downfield, and that's knocked away by the defense. Kazanowski's pass is... That was Diallo who knocked that away. I, I'm not sure Walker Sutton would have caught it anyway, but Diallo made sure he didn't. I don't think he would have. Diallo. A lot of contact uh, between the two guys. RPI fans, you can hear them below us, and maybe the bench kind of wanting a pass interference penalty, but uh, probably, honestly, best just to let that one go. It wasn't something that... Yeah, there was contact, but it really didn't affect the outcome, I don't think. Clock stops with 52 seconds left. So it'll be third and four RPI. RPI tight to the line this time. Hand off to Burnett. Burnett's got a first down, and oh, he, he, it looked like he might have been able to break it, but Hansen got a hand on him and took him down. It's a first down out to the 42. Yeah, Blake Hansen maybe stopped the touchdown there. Okay, so RPI quickly to the line, hand off to Burnett again, straight up the middle. Burnett on the carry. He's gonna be stopped at the 46. 35 seconds left, clock still running. Technically, technically, Hobart had too many men on the field. One guy didn't get off at least one, maybe two, before the snap, but uh, they were close, so <laughs> I'm okay. I, I think the officials were okay with that one. Pass on, uh, nope, incomplete. It looked like it was going to be complete on second down, uh, but it goes incomplete, and now it's going to be third and six. A quick seven and out pass to Sterling Walker, but Kazanowski just delivered that way too low on the left sideline. Sterling Walker tried to make a diving attempt, got his hands on the ball, had it for a split second, but as soon as his shoulders hit the ground, the ball went flying into the sideline. So it's third and six RPI at the 46, 16 seconds left in the half. RPI, play action. Kazagnowski, as has been a lot today, having trouble finding somebody open and overthrows everybody on third and six. And it'll go to fourth down now here in Troy. Goldsmith, the intended receiver down at the Hobart 40, and he had two steps on the uh, defensive back there but the ball just airmailed over everybody. So RPI with eight seconds left on the fourth and six will send out the punt team. And you gotta, I got to expect here that Hobart's just going to send everybody here. No, looks like they're going to keep lying to, back. And, well, I still got to imagine they're going to just try to block this. I don't, you know, don't see any point in not trying to at this stage. I agree. Burke gets the kickoff. It bounces, bounces, and that'll be it for the half once RPI downs this. RPI, it's gonna go look good on the stat sheet. The kick is down to the six yard line, but it doesn't matter because the half is over. Two nothing, RPI leads after one half. Wow, a defensive struggle as we predicted kind of in the pregame opening. And also what we talked about is these two teams play white knucklers. Every year they get together, it seems like it's a one-score game. Sometimes it's an overtime game. Sometimes it's a one-point game. We've seen that all through the rivalry of these over the last couple of decades with Hobart and RPI. And that's what we've got so far uh, in the first half here in Troy. Again, your halftime score, RPI 2, Hobart 0. The main stat that has jumped out at me, Kurt, is that Hobart still has no first downs on offense in the first half. That tells you how good this RPI defense is. Uh, the Hobart's had only one pass completion, and it went for minus one yards. On the other side, RPI's got to be kind of frustrated because they've moved the ball offensively. They've had a couple of good drives, and both and they've ended in turnovers deep into Hobart territory. They could be a little bit <laughs> more comfortable than just two nothing here. So, but that's what they're looking at. So, and, and on the flip side of that, of course, is Hobart. If you look at this, and you're the statesman, you really got outplayed most of the first half. You couldn't do anything on offense, and yet you go into the locker room and you're telling your folks, 
down two points. All we need is one score, and we're you know ahead. Ahead, yeah. I was going to say it, two or zero. It, it matters if you don't get anything, but after that, if you scored something, so, it, it doesn't matter the two if you at least score something. Right. So Hobart's got to look at this as like, hey, we we've weathered a pretty bad first half. All we've got to do is do something here in the second half. But we'll see. Again, a defensive struggle. No no surprise when an RPI gets together with Hobart. And we will take a break and run you down what's been going on in Liberty League football and come back for the second half. The score here after one half in Troy, it is RPI 2 and Hobart nothing. And you're listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI. says, it's just cancer, get over it. Or snap out of it, it's just diabetes. And who would ever say, it's nothing serious, it's just heart disease. But you do hear those words about people living with another serious illness. It's called depression, and it threatens the lives of more than 15 million Americans. Like heart disease, its symptoms can be misleading. Like diabetes, it's biologically based. And like cancer, it can be fatal. So what we should say is what doctors, medical professionals, and other experts say. Depression can be treated. Which is why those who have overcome it say getting treatment is like getting your life back. Depression is real, but so is hope. Learn more at depressionisreal.org. Supported by a coalition of mental health organizations, including the American Psychiatric Foundation, and the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. There's a natural resource that exists everywhere on the planet which could benefit all of civilization, yet it's been largely ignored. That resource is women. At CARE, we found in country after country that empowering women is one of the fastest ways to help end poverty. I am powerful. I am powerful. She has the this power to change Jason her world. Baltimore. You have the power to help her do it. Call 1-800-521-CARE How's your lunch? Oh, good, Dad, but not as good as the sandwiches you used to make. Really? Sure. Remember how you'd melt the cheese first and dry the pickles on a paper yeah, towel so they didn't make the bread soggy? Oh, and then you cut it into four pieces with no crust? I did all that. <laughs> Jeez, Dad, how would anyone forget something like that? You never know which moments will be the ones they'll remember forever. So take time to be a dad today. Learn more at one 4 dad 411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Oh, that was a great effort. Health and Human Services in the Ad Council. This Wind is, is the back home of Engineer good. Football. 91.5 FM. WRPI You can drive Troy. away. Mom. Dad. I'm in eighth grade now. Honda like that, that means Honda those years of peer pressure are way field. behind me. From here on out, it's all about good grades and living up to your totally realistic expectations. Alcohol is probably the last thing on my mind. Like you said, I'm too young to drink. When I'm with my friends, all we talk about are current events and boy bands. We're definitely not curious about what alcohol tastes like or why the older kids drink. And do I notice when you have a drink at dinner? Of course not. Just like I haven't noticed where you keep the alcohol. Now, Pats, oh. please and welcome. If the opportunity RPI arises team. to talk to me about drinking, you should definitely continue to avoid it. And if you do bring it up, just remind me that I'm too young. That'll probably do the trick. Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% try it by the eighth grade. Start a real conversation at underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. After I came home from the war, I lost everything. <laughs> my job, my family. But this place, this is where I started to put my life back together. A few weeks ago, my husband of 47 years had a stroke. I'm staying.
RPI cheer team.
We are live with you once more here at the East Campus Stadium on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, where we are nearing the start of half number two between RPI and Hobart in Liberty League football action. The score at the end of one half with has RPI leading Hobart 2-0. Sounding like just Premier Soccer League score, yes. Yeah. My name is Kurt Sutt. I'm here with the Anti Roy. We're bringing you all the action live on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. Before we start the second half, we would like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, and that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. Also, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org. And if we're sending something out, we'll send it to you on that feed. That is WRPI.org. And what are the big stats from that first half, Yancey? Well, a number of them jump out at you. It's, it's pointing to the dominance of RPI's defense and so far the futility of Hobart's offense. And chiefly among those is first downs. Hobart doesn't have a first down. No first downs in the first half for the Statesmen. Also, total yards. They've been held to 11 total yards. That's right, 11 total yards in the first half. 12 rushing, minus one yard receiving. Now, part of that rushing total was knocked down a bit by that errant snap that led to the safety, the one score in this game. That was a 16-yard loss on that play, which is part of why their total rushing yards is just 12. Walker, RPI's offense zero, Gil, better, Gilsman. although they haven't put in a score yet. They've got eight first years. downs. They've got 102 rushing yards. Uh, we'll kick off they for are also leading in the passing game as well. They have seven completions for 130 or rather for 35 yards, 137 total yards. And it'll be a touchback as Hobart was kicking off to RPI. Hobart won the toss, Kick took the ball in the first half. The RPI gets the ball in the second half, and they'll start out at their own 25-yard line. They're going to be going left to right, which means going line. into the wind here in the third quarter. Of course, that means they'll have it in the fourth quarter. And to set the uniforms again real quickly here, RPI in its home black and white, black jerseys, white numbers, white pants, black helmets with the red RPI on the side. Hobart on its road, orange and white. Uh, white jerseys, orange numbers, orange pants, orange helmets with the H on the side of the helmet. First and 10 RPI at their own 25. Again, they're going to bunch up again like they did late in the first half. And it's going to be a handoff to Burnett. And he gets three out to the 28-yard line going to the right. And engineers combined for 102 rushing yards in that first half. Of course... Leading the way was Dylan Burnett, their featured back of three, all year. Second down and seven. Uh, he also led them in receiving with 14 yards. RPI second and seven at their own 28 with that two nothing lead. 71 total y rushing yards for Burnett. I was looking for that figure, didn't have it immediately, but it was 71 rushing yards in the first half. Two wideouts to the right. RPI running what looked like a slow motion play. Pass complete to Walker Sutton at the 45, an and he drags complete. some guys with him out the towards Walker the 50 Sutton and into the Hobart side of the field to the 49. Well, how about that for some trickeration? You said slow Jack motion. It looked like Kazanowski and Burnett faking a handoff to the right, but almost like stopping, moving very slowly. First and then all of a sudden, RPI Kazanowski spins, Hobart, looks to his right, and there was Walker line. Sutton at midfield ready to make the catch. First and 10 RPI at the Hobart 49 yard line. Burnett with the Burnett carry goes the up carry. the middle and he stopped just short of the 46. And just to complete the description of that last play, Walker Sutton was down the right sideline and he sprinted out, went all the way down to about Second the Hobart 45 Walsh. and then turned and came back towards the ball, three, making the catch around the 50. And seven. 13.35 to go third quarter, RPI second and seven at the 46, up two nothing. Another give to Burnett. Burnett breaks through the line initially and Burnett gets out the to the 42. Inside the 45-yard line. Among those on the tackle, Peterson Monexent. He's said his name all first half. He led all tackle defensive players with nine tackles in the first half. A Third down and three at the, the Hobart 42-yard line. Here. RPI with a third and three. We'll spread it out this time. Burnett stays in the backfield. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Allison, the tight ends on the right. As RPI's got a third and three, running out of time. One second left on the play clock, they'll snap it. 
Kasnowski throws. That is complete to the right side, and that'll be a first down. Goldsmith got it. He was hit Goldsmith. initially, got away from the hit, and then got enough yards for the first Tackle down, 37. Mahoney. Yeah, nice little shimmy move by Goldsmith because Hanson, the free safety, was all over line. him at first about the 42, 10, 43, RPI. which would have been short of the first down, but he just kind of shook him to the left and then the right and ends up getting down to the 37 for a first down. RPI up 2-0. They'll go to Burnett again. This time they won't be as fortunate as carry. he ran into a wall. Walsh Stop was the first the person to screen. grab him by the legs, and he didn't get any yards. Tackled by 28 Bliss. So RPI trying to do something on the first possession of this second half. Up 2 nothing. It's a loss of one. A safety late second in the first and quarter. 11. Second oh, quarter. Me, first, first half, I was going to say. First... Yes, with a minute eight left to go in the first half, RPI got the safety. Second and 11. Kasanowski is going to roll out to his right, rolling out, throws, and throws it away. Had no intention of that being caught in the field of play. Jamin Bliss, one of their outside linebackers, was just chasing Third down Kasanowski from behind and almost caught him. For a sack, Kazanowski just unloading the ball down the right sideline to get rid of it. So third and long for the engineers here in their first possession of the second half. As much as we've talked about RPI just shutting down Hobart's offense, remember, Hobart's defense has shut down RPI's offense. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the RPI's moved the ball, has a lot of total yardage, but, mm -hmm. but no offensive scores. The stats may not look as good. But what's on the scoreboard for the Hobart defense is excellent. Kasignowski on third and short overthrows his receiver so much that Walker Sutton, I think, had stopped Tended around the 25 Walker and the ball fourth went down, down to the 10 and it was incomplete. Well, total miscommunication there because Kasignowski thought it was a sideline route all the way and, and uh, Walker Sutton ran it as if it was a 15 yard and Anderson out because Park as you said, he punt. stopped around the 24 the and cut to the sideline. The ball was delivered all the way down at about Back the five. Number six, Marcus Lenz. Uh, landing on a patch of ground at the uh, at about the five in the sideline. So fourth down and RPI will punt. Yeah, it's into fourth the and wind. 11, fourth and 11. Burr come out, comes out to punt into the wind. Goes to the left and fielded by, uh, Lenz no, not Lyon. It was fielded by Lenz on the line. run. And he's going to run up to, where are they going to put him out of bounds? They're going to put him out at the 30 at the 29, so not a lot of yards there for RPI in the punt, maybe 10. Well, that was a good read by Marcus Lenz. That ball was held up by the wind, and for a second you thought he was just going to let it bounce, but he, seeing it was just Hobart hanging the up there, he sprinted to the ball, caught it at, what, line. maybe the 13 or so in the, on the fly on the full run, and ends up bringing it all the way back out to the 29, getting it out of the uh, shadow of the end zone. Hobart's first possession of this second half, first and 10. Ground game for the Statesman gets them a yard. Number two, Denham. Yeah, it's Denham. Okay. I was, <laughs> was, was on the run. Um, on the carry. He, he had a total it's of 14 of yards nine. rushing in the first half. Boswell had minus two. Of course, engineers. a good chunk of that was because he was the guy who got, uh, well, credit, if you will, for that 16-yard loss on what led to the safety. Second down and nine. And a pickup of one for Denham on that play. Three wide receiver formation. Tight end on the left for Hobart. Cruson wants to throw. Under pressure. Gets it away to Denham. He's going to get caught behind the line of scrimmage. And that's a loss of three. Boy, big play by C.J. Shoemaker. Shoemaker. They were trying to set up a screen. And he, had a, he was being blocked. And he just pushed aside the blocker. And he ends up catching... Denham behind the line of scrimmage so of for a loss. Two on the play. Uh, Hobart now has completed two passes 12. on the afternoon, and both of them have been for minus yards. Third down and 12 for the Statesmen. Still in search of their first first down of the day. Three wide out formation. Cruson wants to throw under pressure, and he throws it away Passes on third down. Incomplete. Amici Conquo coming from Cruson's right side like a freight train. Fourth and Just 12. broke through the line, and, and Newsom 
uh, Chris Brown Hobart, running for his life and just flung line. that one out to the right sideline, the far sideline, and into the Hobart Lying bench, the really. And uh, we'll say it again, we've been hammering this point all through the first, first half. Walker Still zero first team. downs for the Hobart offense. And we're five minutes into the second half here. Lying out to punt with the wind. And I don't know how that wasn't blocked. Good kick. Oh it's going my. to take a Hobart bounce from the 25 to the 5 and down, and it's in the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Uh, the, the, cover, the, the ball actually kept hopping so well, a they couldn't get to it in time. And by the time it got covered, the, the player slid into the end zone with the ball. That was, as it was rolling at about the, the 15 and the 10, you thought, I guess Hobart's going to be able to cover this inside the 10. And it just had so much momentum on the roll that their defenders, or rather their RPI punt coverage first team, could 10. not catch up with it. Kind of a lucky line. break there for RPI. I thought they were going to be pinned inside the 10. Ball comes out to the 20 as RPI has their second possession of this second half. 2-0. RPI leads 9.43 to go in the third quarter. On first down, Burnett, maybe Burnett a yard. A carry. It's a gain of one. Trying to go to the right, and there wasn't a lot of room there. 45. Bliss came exit. in to make the tackle, tackle for Hobart. 78 rushing yards Second down and so nine. far this afternoon for Burnett. He's the only player with any kind of yardage stacked up here through almost two and a half quarters of football. RPI stacks a pair of receivers on each side. Burnett in the backfield. He's going to take the handoff. Burnett pushes forward, gets some help, and Burnett he's in a whole pile of people at the 26-yard line. He's down. Romano and Visconti. Al Shipley calls Romano on the tackle. tackle. I'm not sure which of those six Gate people you give credit for the tackle. It's third down and four from the RPI 26-yard line. So RPI in a third and four. What's RPI's third down completion rate? Six out of 13. Eight and a half to go in the third quarter. RPI up 2 nothing. Third and four at their own 26. Kasignowski pulls down the snap. Pass complete, but Passes it'll be short of a first down as Goldsmith caught it at the no 26, the which was the line of scrimmage, and was immediately tackled. Romano, one of the linebackers that we've been calling his name a lot, uh, in on the tackle. Nice the bring down of Goldsmith at the 26 for no gain and fourth down now for RPI. There's really been three guys for Hobart who we've said their name on defense all day, Manexent and Romano, the linebackers, and also Jay McCoy, the free safety, making punt. a lot of tackles and really keeping Hobart in this game at a time its offense not doing much. Burke kicks it away. Nice high kick. Fair catch is signaled, and that was Lenz taking it inside his own 40 and then almost collides with his own guy. No return. Yeah, the upfield blocker was battling we'll with an over. RPI coverage guy First and almost kind of got knocked into Linz. Good concentration by Linz to hey fans, not Ryan's let that rattle him and make the catch. RPI out at the 40. Head downtown after and, the game um, to check out the pub kitchen at Ryan's Wake Pub. Good field position to start this drive for Hobart. Again, they've, they've struggled all day, but again, if you're going to try to look at it as positively as you can, well, if you're Hobart, well, we got the ball at the 40. This is our best starting point since early in the ball game. Maybe if we can move something now, we're still right in this. Cruson had trouble with the snap. Hands off, and is that a first down? It is. It's the first first down as Boswell takes it off the left side, gets 11 yards, and to the 49 of RPI, and that's Number the first one, first down for Hobart. Boswell, yeah, carry. all afternoon. It's not a mistake, folks. They got no Eight first downs 11. in the first half, and that was an 11-yard carry by Boswell to get the Statesman's first first, first down of the game. Longest offensive play of the game as well for Hobart, and they're now in RPI territory. And like we said, RPI's dominated the stats, but it's only a two-point lead, so anything can still happen here. First and 10 Hobart at the RPI 49. 2-0 RPI leads. Boswell with the carry. Another good pickup. He's going to get about five down to the 44. There's also a struggle going on away from the play. That the Josh Cohen, 97. 
and one of the offensive linemen for Hobart kind of mixing it up. RPI thought there was a late hit or grab by the Hobart lineman, but no flag on the play. To the RPI 44 I believe it's Cade Frucci, 67, that was tangled up with Cohen. No penalties on that. So we're at six and a half to go in the third quarter. Two nothing RPI leads. Second and five Hobart at the RPI 44. Three wide out formation. Cruson is going to keep it himself. He goes left, runs out of room, and he's out of bounds at the 41. Didn't get much, but it's now three plays in a row where you've seen Hobart kind of carry. move the line of scrimmage the 41 yard and line. get some sort of rushing Third down yardage and out of their plays. They hadn't been doing that at all in the first half, and now they've gone for 11 and 6 and 2. So sets up a third and short at the RPI 41. Again, it's uh, RPI has dominated the stats, but the score is just 2 nothing engineers midway through the third quarter. Three wide out formation, and that's a direct snap to Boswell. He hands it off. Denim. On the carry. Denham leans across. And we got a flag coming in. Denham, it was a direct snap to Boswell. He handed it off to Denham. Denham would have a first down, but what is this flag? RPI is pointing at one of the tackles, Ben Frank, 63, I believe, of, of Hobart. The engineers were pointing at the Hobart player and clapping their hands when the flag came out. Now, we don't know for sure if that's the, there's going to be a call against that player. We'll see. But that was the reaction that it might have been after the play and a little continued back and forth. Dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 63 on the offense. 63 offense, a 15 -yard penalty unnecessary after roughness the first down after the, the play. So first down. Yeah, so the, the play stands as a first down Dead and they lose foul, 15 personal yards. Personal foul against Hobart. We'll move the ball back to the Hobart. So Denham had gotten it down to the line. 38 of RPI, but now they're walking it off 15 yards back to the Hobart side of the field, 47. The near side hash mark, they're moving right to left, which is with a steady wind here in the third quarter. Hobart first to 10 at their own 47. So Hobart's back to her first and 10 at their own 47. Five thirty-five to go in the third quarter, two nothing RPI leads. Hobart stays on the ground, and this is going to get them about two yards as Denham went to the left and couldn't find a whole lot of open space there. Two Denham on the carry. Michi Conquo Jeff among Tula the tacklers the tackle there for, for, the for Rensselaer. And Denham is sitting down, and so we'll have an official timeout on the field. 5 13 to go in the third quarter. 2 nothing. RPI leads Hobart. Yeah, Denham, their leading rusher, and I can't tell if that's his calf or his knee. His ankle looks like the calf area on his right side that the trainers are now taking a look at. We'll I mentioned Conquo uh, among the tacklers right there. He is the leading tackler, and he did get credit for that one. He leads the engineers in tackles right now with seven. Joe Deptula with four. Lou Vigent and Nate Sicard with three apiece. Out of town in the third quarter, Rochester leads Buffalo State 9 nothing, And in the second quarter, it's Ithaca 6, St. Lawrence nothing. Again, this is getting into the home stretch of the season, the final four games of the conference schedule. Uh, RPI having dispatched of Buffalo State and Rochester, the two teams picked for the bottom of the pile this year in the conference, so they're 2-0, and but now they're heading into the tough part. They're going to have Hobart, Ithaca, St. Lawrence, and Union and will sort of determine the outcome of this season. And as you're looking at the conference of the whole, Kurt, I think it's kind of clear consensus that Ithaca is kind of king of the hill right now and the team that everyone will be looking or expecting to at this point win it they're top they're the top ranked team they're unbeaten in conference and uh, they're unbeaten overall and unbeaten overall and rpi is going to have to go there in two weeks so and they beat this hobart team 31 to 7 earlier this month second and eight balls at the hobart 49 yard line Four wideouts. Cruson wants to pass. 
Puts the ball up in the air, and it's incomplete along the near sideline. K was the intended receiver. C.J. Lyons in coverage there, kind of tangled with K. Lyons talking to the referee because he thought K pushed off, but no flag there. And by the way, we should mention C.J. Lyons, I believe, was the, the one score in this game was a safety after a botched snap uh, that led to a scramble near the goal line. And C.J. Lyons appeared to be the guy who made the hit on Boswell which ended up leading to a safety. We weren't able to get that credit, that number in the first half. Third down and eight, scoreboard's wrong. It's third and eight. Krusen fakes the handoff, throws in the flat far side. That's complete, but not a first down. Krusen's pass is complete. Pass was complete to Bartosik, two. but he number is seven. two yards Bartosik. short of a first down at the 45 yard line. Gain is to the RPI. Now what do you do here if line. you're Hobart, you haven't had many offensive chances, and you're on RPI side. It's third down, the field. It's fourth, fourth and two, and, and it looks two. like they're going to line up to, well, either go for it or pretend to go for it. Pretend to go for it and try to draw the engineers offside. But they're lining up as if to go for it. Fourth and two at the 45. Single wide out each side. Krusen is in the shotgun. Ten seconds left on the play clock, and they'll snap the ball. Krusen will keep it. Krusen will get the first down, going to the right, and Krusen he's going to find Gary. enough room, and he's to the 41, and that's a first down. Well, good forward to thrust the by the right side of that line, line especially Cade Frucci, the, the right RPI guard, uh, and also Kieran Paskowitz, the right tackle, surging forward. He didn't need but two yards. He ended up getting uh, just enough for the first down, four-yard gain for Krusen. And now Hobart, with what amounts to be their biggest threat to score, their best, their best sustained drive so far in this ballgame. First and 10 at the RPI 41. Engineers lead 2-0. And that's not a mistake. That's a score. 2-0 in the third quarter. And Boswell takes the handoff. He tries to run right. They're having some luck that way. For one, and he gets about Boswell, three yards to the 38. Carry inside the 40-yard line. And we have an injured Officials time out. Hobart player. By and CJ Lyons. that will stop the clock. 3.23 to go here in the third quarter. RPI 2, Hobart nothing. Hobart has now run nine plays on this drive. That's by far their best drive of the afternoon. That's Kieran Paskowitz right now who is being looked at by the training staff for the Hobart Statesman. The clouds are basically gone here in Troy. It's sunny in the 60s. Wind is still with Hobart right now. They've gotten three first downs on this drive after having none through the first half in the opening drive of the second half. So they've now put together three first downs. Their overall yards, which were 11 at the first half, are now up to 46. And Krusen now three of nine with one interception on the afternoon. Paskowitz will walk off under his own power. Second down and seven for Hobart at the RPI 38. Krusen wants to throw, looking left along the sidelines, and Davis can't get it. It's a touchdown. LaBella with the reception. Flag. Oh, nope, that's a leaf. Complete <laughs> through Alex LaBella. Hobart takes a 6-2 to two lead, and Davis looks like he's hurt along the sideline. It was Davis and LaBella battling down on the left sideline at about the three-yard line. Uh, both reaching up for the ball, and LaBelle is just a taller guy, and the ball was just thrown a little bit over uh, Davis's reach, and he used that height to make the catch at the three. Davis falls down, and he, it's an easy glide into the end zone from there from LaBelle. And, you know, as we were saying in the first half, Hobart did nothing offensively, no, not even a first down, but they were only down by two. And at that point, 
All you would need is one drive, one big play. And boy, they put together a big drive here. Uh, four first downs on this drive after getting none again through the first two and a half quarters. And no big plays Touchdown whatsoever pass. until right David there, right when they need it. Alex a long LaBella. bomb from Cruson to LaBella down the left sideline. He outleaps Davis for the catch at the three, goes in for the score, and Hobart with the first touchdown of the afternoon. It's Statesman six, Engineers two, with 3.02 to go in the third quarter, and they're going to line up for a two-point try here. So Hobart, even with the win, they're going to keep the offense out and go for two. Denham is in the backfield along with uh, Cruson's out of the shotgun. Denham is next to him. Two wideouts on the right. You got a man in the slot on the left. Cruson looking right pass, and that is incomplete. So the two point conversion fails. It remains 6 2 in favor of Hobart. But in a game like today, six is a lot. Tried to hit Boswell at the goal line on a sort of a sprint out right, and he Boswell was cutting to the far sideline, and the ball was thrown behind him. He had to turn and try to make a back shoulder catch. And couldn't pull off the acrobatics to do that. So the ball falls to the ground. And the attempt is no good. Uh, you know, going for two there because eight two is a, touch, is a six point difference as opposed to seven two. But again, it's the First touchdown of the game red. in what's been a defensive struggle, which is what we predicted at the outset here. It's a, it's always a defensive struggle between these two teams, and it's always seemingly a white knuckler of a ball game, and that's what we got right here. Hobart hadn't done anything offensively for two and a half quarters until they put together that drive. They marched down the field, four first downs, and the touchdown pass on a bomb from Cruson to LaBella. RPI offense now has to get in gear. They've had some sustained drives ended in turnovers, a fumble, and an interception. And they've got nothing to show for offense right now, and now they're trailing. Kickoff goes into the end zone, and RPI is going to let it go through, and they'll take it at the 25-yard line. Kick is through the end zone for you a You could not have RPI asked for better until that drive from the RPI defense. You, you simply could not have asked for better. But line. Then, you, then you look, and you only have a two-point lead. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and technically that two points is on special teams. Right. That's a two point special teams, not two points on the defense. And the offense had had to do something. Now they're behind. Yep. Yep. And uh, like you say, the, the Hobart struggling all the time. And then the sustained drive for the first time, they again, they methodically picked up four first downs and then the 38 yard touchdown pass from Cruz and LaBella. Kaznowski wants to throw on first down. That's going to be a short pass. And that is complete, 30 and 35, Pass and that'll be a first down. To number 20, Christian Buckley. I believe it was Buckley, the 20, the, the backup. I was trying to see. I was confused if it was 20 Buckley or 30 Isernia, but it's 20. Tackled by Nice little screenplay set up on the left side. It's gain of 11, RPI first and now 10, mixing RPI. it up. They've often been leading with that a rush by Burnett on first down, so they're deciding to change it up here on this possession, now trailing for the first time this afternoon. First and 10 RPI at the 36 on their own side of the field. Two and a half to go, third quarter, 6-2. Hobart with the lead here. Burnett takes the carry. Burnett five, falls Burnett over one on of the, the defenders, carry. and he's to the 41 the for a gain of five. And Back the one thing that Lamont. last drive brings up, Kurt, is that Cruson and, uh, and the, the receiving court for Hobart always had the ability to try five, to take a shot downfield down on a long pass. RPI hasn't really done that all afternoon. Official the one timeout pass of any injury. length was uh, Kazanowski to Sterling Walker earlier in the ballgame, which was really kind of a comeback route at midfield, but nothing like deep down the field. They haven't shown any kind of ability to throw deep and kind of open up that uh, Hobart defense. The training staff is looking at another one of the Hobart statesmen, so we have another timeout on the field. 2-11 to go here, third quarter. 6-2, to two, Hobart leads RPI. So if that's the game, let, let's hypothetically, if, if it ends 6-2, uh, Hobart, you look down and it gets one drive that they sustained until they got a big play. Mm -hmm. And then you think about RPI, Coach Isernia talked to us, and we were talking in the break, you know, a game like St. John Fisher, you needed one play. That's right. You know, just what that, and for Hobart, that may have be the play, depending on how this all goes. But Hobart, but RPI, I mean, RPI didn't get that against St. John Fisher. 
They never got that one play that could take a 3 nothing loss and make it a 6 or 7-3 win. Well, still enough time to do something. Obviously, two minutes here in the third quarter, then you've got the whole fourth quarter when the sides will turn around and RPO will have the wind with it. Uh, but again, the challenge for the, the engineers hasn't been just moving the ball and getting a first down or two, but really sustaining it enough to get into the end zone. They've had two de really decent drives, one ended in a fumble and one in an interception. Second and five at their own 41 for RPI. Three wide out formation. Burnett with the carry. Burnett gets hit Burnett and on the he carry. got maybe a yard. He's, he stopped at the 42. And that'll set up a third down and four for the engineers. RPI has been getting into a lot of third and down one. situations today. It's been, it has been very, to very tough for RPI to line. move third this down ball. And four. Even though they've got some, they have better stats than Hobart, they're not getting it deep into the other side of the field. They're six of 14 on third down efficiency this afternoon. This one's going to be a, a challenge here. Third and four at the 42. Two receivers right, one left. They're going to go on the ground and forget it. That Burnett was never going to get anywhere. That was Romano who came in with the first hit on Burnett, and he's going to lose yards and make it fourth and long. Well, yeah, they the were looking for Burnett all Loss the way there. To and the Romano, again, we've been saying these almost these same three players fourth over and, and over again. Romano, Manexen, and McCoy have just been leading a swarming defense here for Hobart and really keying off Burnett. He's obviously the Anderson featured Burke. back for RPI, and they Hit were looking the for him for all the way. Weren't fooled by anything. Uh, Romano breaks through and makes a tackle. That's his 12th tackle back deep. this afternoon. 12 tackles for Romano, and we aren't even in the fourth quarter yet. And RPI is going to go with a fake punt that will fail. That failed. They actually lose a yard as it was snapped to Hughes, one of the up men, and Hobart didn't Hughes. get fooled by that at all, and RPI turns it over Stop on downs at the 39. On the Another big play that's going to go Hobart the Hobart way. Will take over uh, first uh, among those that RPI were in there, Noah Sashery, a linebacker, 22, was in there to sniff out that fake punt and bring the runner down at the RPI 39. Uh, also in there, I believe, was... Uh, 54 Vito Visconti, a whole host of Hobart players. There was never any lane to run. I know RPI wanted to go with the trick play, but that was never open. It never looked like he had much room to run at all. He, you know, he had zero room. Hobart was all over him immediately. So Hobart, first time today, starts on RPI side of the field. First and 10 at the RPI 39 yard line. Crew some pump fakes. Now along the sideline, he's got a man open. Is he going to get there? No. Chris the ball was overthrown the along the far sideline. Wow, LaBella, they, LaBella was the intended receiver. And he had his man burned. He had it beat. What he did LaBella, was about a 20 and, and out and then up along the sideline. And uh, the defender was left hang out to dry along the sideline. LaBella had three steps on him, but the ball was just overthrown by Cruson. As it was unfolding, it looked like they were going to score on that play. He was wide open. He was. Single receivers each side on second and 10. And Denham takes the carry, and Denham, Denham is down to the 33 on what is probably the last play line. of the third quarter. It is. So three quarters are in the book here in Troy, and it's Hobart 6, RPI 2. Connor Noyes on the tackle. And look Gain at the, the, the Hobart sideline on the far side, the orange and, and white, five. now very That's fired up, and they've quarter. got the lead and the momentum. The score. Uh, you know, Hobart 6. Uh, again, RPI we said this two. at halftime. They had a terrible hey, first fans, half. If you're terrible. looking to take that cruise, they were being dominated all in all the categories, vacation. and yet the score was just maybe you want to get away for a day. And or two. you Yankee look at that as your Hobart look. All Premier we got to do is break Travel through agency. here, and now they, Yankee they have is in third also quarter, available for your ground uh, a long drive that resulted in a for third, ended with a 38-yard touchdown pass to give Hobart the lead, six to two. And now RPI gambling and failing on a fourth down. They ran a fake punt in their own territory, didn't make it. And now Hobart taking over at the RPI 39. Uh, and that's and they'll be at the 34 as we start here in the fourth quarter, second down, or rather third down and five. Um, but all the momentum now on the orange and white of the far sideline here in Troy. RPI has dominated for two and a half quarters, but didn't build up a lead. And right now the momentum's with Hobart. And let's face it, the lead they got 
was on special. Well, well not even two defense. special teams. A mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a mistake. A, a botch Hobart snap. mistake is what got them the lead they had. A botch snap, which led to a safety, it was the only score that RPI's put on the board today. Fourth quarter about to start. Third and five Hobart at their own at the RPI. Pardon me. Third and four. Uh, Krusen looked over to his left, decides to run the ball, but he's not going to get a Krusen first down. Mm -hmm. to the 30 yard no, line. they're going to mark him at best a little beyond the 30, and he had to get to the 29. They were trying to set up a wide receiver, wide receiver screen rather to the left side, but RPI had it completely covered. So fourth a good and one at the RPI 30 Krusen yard to not line. Throw over to the left side. Instead, he just kept it up the middle and gets the ball to the 30, and where it's going to be fourth and one, and surely they're going for it here. Now. Yes. Yes, Hobart is going for it. 6-2 they lead, fourth quarter, just underway. Fourth and one at the RPI 30. Bruce out of the shotgun, keeps it himself. He's got the first down. I, I'm pretty sure he does to the 28. Yeah, forward progress got to the 28. The he, got, he got pushed back by Sicard, but by he clearly had the first down. And 94. Nate Simple Sicard. play, just yeah. running off right tackle. First down. Hobart, to Hobart lean at the forward RPI enough to get it. Yeah, Sicard and Deptula were in line. there, but he had he got enough forward progress to the 28 for the first down. Big, big sequence here for the RPI defense. They've been so stout through the afternoon until that last drive where they gave up a touchdown, and now that we're in the fourth quarter, points are hard to come by. You really can't afford to give up any here on this drive to Hobart. First and 10 Hobart at the 28. They're up 6-2. Uh, the pitch to Denham. Denham will get chased down by Deptula. Boy, I don't know what the Hobart was thinking there on that play. Krusen got the snap and kind of looked Denham downfield as if to pass and then Tackles kind of flipped it loss. to the side to Denham, uh, fooling no one, especially not Joe Deptula who made the loss tackle of five for about on the play. a five-yard Second loss. down and 15. From the RPI 33 yard line. So the RPI defense certainly has not given up here. It is a four point deficit for RPI. It's one of those games though that four points seems like a lot more. Second and 15 for the Statesman. Krusen wants to throw. And he's got a wide open man at the six to the five, and that should be a touchdown. Yes, that's a touchdown for Hobart. Touchdown, was that Lance Hobart. who got it? That was uh, Daramola, number nine. Okay, yes. nine, not six. All right, Daramola with the touchdown for for the six. But you know what happened there, Kurt? The state, Hobart. He ran a down, out, and up, which they tried in the third quarter with Labella, and he. The Labella had burned the RPI defender and was wide open in the end zone, but the ball was overthrown. Well, you know what? They went right back to that same play. Different receiver, but right sideline, running a receiver a down, out, and up. And the defender, the RPI defender, de biting on the cut to the sideline. And by the time Daramola cuts upfield towards the end zone, he was wide open. Snap, spot, kick is up. The kick is good kick is for good. Hobart. 12.51 to 12 go 51 here. Fourth remaining. quarter, Hobart 13, RPI 2. Score, Hobart 13. And this game has just gone topsy-turvy in the last, oh, what, uh, eight minutes, nine minutes of football here. RPI had Winning been dominating for two and a half quarters. We've mentioned it over nine, and over. Four, the four, seven, Defense had two, not nine. allowed a first down at Winning all through ticket. the first two and a half quarters. Nine, four, four, and all seven, of a sudden, two, nine. Hobart, it's a long, sustained drive for a touchdown, uh, scoring on a long pass. RPI gets the ball back. Maybe feeling a little bit of pressure. They faced a fourth Women's down deep in their own territory. Mercy Tried to two this get afternoon. it go, using come, a fake punt that to went Houston nowhere. Hobart takes over engineers. deep in RPI territory at the 39. Well, deep, deep enough at the 39. And going to the air for the touchdown again. Uh, Hobart had minus one passing yards the first half. And now what we've seen at the end of the third quarter and now the start of the fourth is Women's soccer Hobart has been able William to burn Smith the engineers on long game. passes, Kickoff, something that was not there early in the game, Stadium. but it has opened up here in the second half of this game, and now it's 13-2, to two, a two-score game, which seems awfully, awfully big uh, this afternoon here in Troy. Yeah, he was just wide open along the sidelines. Yeah, it was a down, out, and up. Yeah. Kickoff goes out of bounds. 
So RPI will get better field position than with the touchback right now. But there's 12.51 to go, and RPI needs Kick two out scores. Is out of and bounds. just to explain that down, out, and up, it was Daramola who ran it, which was he's on the right sideline, right hash mark. He runs about 20 yards straight down the field, cuts towards the sideline as if it's going to be a sideline route, but then at the last second then wheels and heads towards the end zone. Uh, the RPI defender kind of thinking it was a sideline route all Ball the way, got left behind, yard line. and Daramola was three, five Kick yards clear of, of anybody. Ball is placed at the Made RPI the catch at about the five yard line. and First dragged a defender the in just across the pylon for the touchdown in the right corner. Ball's at the 35. RPI has it there after the penalty for the kick going out of bounds. RPI needs points, and they need them soon. Kaznowski. Looking downfield, and is he going to get sacked? Yeah, he's getting sacked at this point. He's going down. Kazanowski is sacked back at the 20. Call that one a coverage line. sack because he couldn't find anybody open downfield, and RPI is back to the 25. It's a loss of 10, second down and 20. Karpowicz, 92. Yeah, he had lots of time to throw. He had plenty of time to look, but just nobody was open. And finally, the pocket collapsed. Karpowicz, 92, coming in for the sack. Second and 20, as RPI is in a passing mode and they get the ball off. Kar uh, Kasnowski got it off before he was going to get hit. Passes Burnett gets it, but he stopped Burnett. the line of scrimmage for no Tackled game. And that's Romano, no again, game. the guy with now 13 tackles Third down, coming in from his linebacker position. Caught Burnett by the foot and just wouldn't let him go until someone else came in to help bring Burnett down. RPI very quickly looking at a third and 20. This is WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. Kurt Sutt, Yancey Roy on the call for you. Engineers trailing. Flag comes out. Is that against RPI? On, did they move early? Full start. They did. Number 19 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Let's start penalty. Third, third and 20 RPI just became third and 25, and RPI is just making this tougher on line. themselves as they trail 13-2. Third and 25. Four wide out formation. Kasnowski out of the shotgun. Looking to throw. This is a three man rush. He gets the ball away and it's going to be incomplete. Passes Walker incomplete. Sutton was the intended receiver. Intended he saw that all the way. The defenders hadn't turned to 25. look, but he was coming up behind them. Yeah, it was overthrown, and he tried to, like, <laughs> induce a penalty call from the refs by kind of uh, affirmatively bumping into the defender, but that ball was overthrown. Uh, you know, frustrated frustration there as he looked and held his hands wide open, asking the, the ref for a call, but the ref shaking his head and saying no. That ball was well overthrown, and RPI is going to have to punt. Now. They have the win. That's the only thing going in RPI's favor right now. Burke kicks the ball away. It'll take an RPI bounce. And the statesman will just stay away from this as it continues rolling. It's inside the 20. It's around the 18. Punt rolls dead at the. And it's still rolling. Hobart. Uh, and there we go. 11.01 to go in the fourth quarter. Hobart 13, RPI 2. It's going to end up going for about a 63 yard punt. Looks good on the stat sheet. Well, here we are. It's a crucial set of downs now for the RPI defense. They're now down two scores, 13-2. to two. And after dominating for two and a half quarters and not even allowing a first down, well, they've been pushed around the last two possessions by Hobart, both of which have resulted in touchdowns. They've got to make a stop and get the ball back. If Hobart holds on the ball for any amount of time here, it's... It's going to be bad for RPI, yes. Yeah. Well, Hobart cruising on a keeper. He'll get stopped. If he's lucky, he got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he did. So there'll be a no gain on that. You wonder if Hobart's even going to put the ball in the air here, maybe maybe a screen pass at most, because now you're up 11 points. No uh, gain on the play. Second down. And, and you're, you're getting down to the 10-minute mark in the fourth quarter, and the priority now for the Statesman is just run the clock, run the clock, run the clock. Second and 10 for Hobart. Three receiver formation, one running back. Oh, 
Hand off to Denham. He's going to get caught, and there'll be a loss of yards on that. So the defense gets in and gets to him. Lions and Shoemaker got in there. Yeah, Shoemaker, the first guy to get there, kind of bursting in from the offensive right side, the defensive left side. Loss is back to the 16. Grabbed Denham by the arm and just twirled him around like a wagon wheel. Third down and 11. Bringing him down at the 16. Third and 11 for the Statesmen, who are just getting to the line with six seconds left on the play clock. Two running backs. Cruise and hands off to Denham. Denham, Denham. Denham goes left, trying to find Denham room along the, the sidelines, doesn't find 19. any. He stopped within, within the 20, and it'll be fourth down for Hobart. Yeah, well, main priority there for Denham was run the ball and stay in bounds. And that's what he did. RPI and Deptula and others trying to force him out to the sideline, but uh, Denham went down, kind of giving himself up a little bit there at the, the 24 to keep the clock running as we're down, down Fourth under nine. nine minutes to play. RPI has time. Lion I mean, it's going away on them, but they Walker still have time. Punter Tobias Weffering. I haven't mentioned him much here in the second half. In the first half, I, I could have argued that he was their best offensive player for Hobart. Some booming kicks that kept Hobart out of trouble uh, to an extent in that first half. Delay of game. Offense. Five yards. So home. Hobart's going to get flagged Green with delay of game out. here. So now they're backed up to the 14, the and Weffering is going to be standing at his goal line for this punt, and he's going to be punting into a wind, which if you look at the flagpole on the south side, is the wind's really picking up here. Maybe it could help RPI on this kick. Good snap. Kick is away, not a good kick. And that's going to go out of bounds at the Hobart 33. So RPI is going to get the ball in really good field bounds, position here, trailing 11 points with 8.14 to go. Well, how about that? We just talked about the wind coming really stiff out of the, the south Hobart side, and he got that one only 19 yards in the air. And that's a break for RPI. So I thought he went out of the 33. They'll mark it at the 34. Okay, so 20-yard kick. 20-yard kick for Weffering, and now we're at 8.14, and this is basically a must-score drive for the engineers. First and 10, RPI at the 33. RPI on the Burnett ground on the carry. to the 29. Actually, the 34. RPI on the ground to the 29 yard line. So Burnett, who's been doing the lion's share of the running duties, picks up five yards on that play. Gain of five, second and five. Second down and five for RPI. Kazagnowski looks end zone and he's got a man touchdown. Kazagnowski finds Palmer and RPI's got eight and they are right back in this. Wow, you know what that was set up by is a good uh, off read, fake read by Kazanowski. He was in the pocket and he looked to the right sideline and you could see the deep secondary of Hobart reading the quarterback's eyes and they all just ran towards that far Jake sideline Kazanowski and all of a sudden four. Palmer was behind DJ everyone Palmer. in the middle of the end zone and a perfect strike from Kazanowski. Palmer making the catch about five yards deep. RPI's first touchdown of the game. It makes it 13 to eight. So of course they're gonna go for two points here. Uh, two point conversion to try to get within three. And they're lining up Burnett the running back to take the snap here for this two-point conversion. Yeah, Hughes is with him in the backfield. Burnett gets, you know, he just hit a wall. He just hit a wall at the three-yard line, and that's it. It doesn't the try. count. The try is so no it stays 13 to 7 8 44 remaining in favor in of Hobart. RPI quarter. trying to close it so Hobart a field 13, goal can tie it, but that's not eight. going to happen. Romano, a guy we've said his name all day, but he led the RPI charge in closing that gap off the right guard seven that, that tonight. Burnett was trying to sneak through. Stop by the Houston Fieldhouse, purchase your tickets. Looked like a little confusion on that RPI play as well. Burnett was look, still looking to the sideline for the call After and the game, turned around in time to just get the Subway snap and take off. Great it, deals and they weren't very food. settled before they Subway, tried to run that two-point Located down the hill 
in the Troy Plaza. It's been a scoring frenzy in the second three. half. Subway, eat <laughs> fresh. Three touchdowns after the only score being a safety in the first half. So now it's 13 to eight, 7.44 to go in the ball game. And we had mentioned that possession was pretty much a must score possession and the RPI delivered a terrific pass from Kazanowski to Palmer for the touchdown. And now the engineers will kick off. And again, the wind favors them. And it came into play in that last uh, Hobart punt that was uh, by Weffering was back in his end zone and got only a 20 yard punt off, which uh, ended up leading to the RPI touchdown. It's kind of funny, a, a funny moment here. The wind, as you can probably hear in the speakers, really picking up here. And next to us is the Hobart coaching box. <laughs> and about five seconds ago, a stack of papers went flying from their desk out into the stands. A Hobart coach kind of reaching his hand out the window in a desperate attempt to grab them before they went into the seats. Bill, the wind is so strong that RPI needs a holder for this kickoff. Yeah, it's really changed here late in the afternoon. Merrick boots it, and that goes into the end zone, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line for Hobart. Through the end zone for a touchback, Hobart will take over first and 10 at the road So we'll set the stage here, 13 to eight, Hobart over RPI. The last time Hobart had the ball, very conservative uh, attack, if you even want to call it that. They just, you know, were trying to run the clock, ran three plays, didn't get anywhere. Um, now that this, the game has closed to a five point deficit, Hobart's gonna have to put a premium on keeping this ball possessing it for a while, getting a few first downs. They're not just going to be able to run three and outs and try to run out the clock. Hobart's going to put three receivers bunched together on the right, one on the left. Houston is alone in the backfield, tight end on the left side. If it's first and 10 at the 25, quick pass, and that's incomplete. Goes first off pass uh, the hands of LaBella. Yeah, they were trying to set up that wide receiver screen on the white right side. Second down at 10. And the pass just a, a was a little high, and B, LaBella didn't look it all the way into his hands. It kind of skidded off the top of his fingers and out of bounds. A little bit of pressure coming from Connor Noyes there on LaBella. He was closing in as LaBella was trying to make the catch and turn up field. That stops the clock, 7.41 to go fourth quarter. So more than half the fourth quarter available to RPI when they get this ball back eventually. Direct snap to Boswell, he gets hit, flag comes flag out. Play. Flag Boswell from both sides. On the carry. Uh, player loses his helmet for Hobart and Boswell only got about a yard. Yeah, one of the offensive linemen there, I believe it was Paskowitz, 58, lost his helmet. There's been a, an increased sort of testiness on the line between both RPI, rather the RPI defense and the Hobart offense. A lot of late pushing and shoving after Personal the whistle. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 11. So defense. hands to the face against that RPI, that is Shoemaker run, who's gonna get called down. for that. And, and that was the blow that knocked Hobart Paskowitz's the helmet off. Because his helmet came off through the penalty. And that's a tough break for First the engineers because it was gonna be third and long, probably Personal third and something penalty like seven or RPI. so. Uh, we'll move the ball to the 40-yard line. Hobart yard instead of 15-yard walk-off is going to bring it all the way out to the 41 of Hobart. First and 10. Tough, tough break for RPI. Look, they're, they've got a little bit of the momentum back. they got to kind of keep their heads and not commit penalties that keep Hobart on the field. Because of the penalty, Paskowitz does not have to sit a play. Helmet comes off during play. Normally you do, unless the other team is the reason for it. So he is allowed to be in this play. First and 10, Hobart at the 41-yard line on their own side of the field. They are leading 13 to eight. Boswell gets the handoff. The pile moves Boswell, Boswell over the 46. The so a pickup of five. Gain of five. We're gonna hit the Second seven minute mark. Seven minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Hobart five, second obviously down trying to five. run some clock, but you know what, if you're RPI, you've gotta also be just leery of the pass game. They've had some success going deep down the sidelines here in the second half. And it wouldn't surprise me if Krusen and the Statesman look for that kind of play again here on this possession. Second and five. This is a heavy left formation except the running back who's on the right. And Krusen's gonna go right behind 
Uh, the running back Boswell, and he steps out at the 50. Knocked yep, one, sh one yard short of a first down. By Deptula. So it'll be third and one for Hobart. Evaded one tackle at the 46, ended up getting out to the 50 before he's knocked out of bounds by Deptula. But the extra effort Ball by Cruson, instead of this being like a third and third five, and one. It's a third and one. At the 50, ball is on the near side hash. They're moving left to right, which is against the wind here in the fourth quarter. Third down and one. It'll be cruising out of the shotgun. Two receivers to the right, double tight end formation. They hand off to Boswell, and he's got, I Boswell think he's got the first the down. Carry. They're coming in at the 49, and that'll be a first down. Amici Conquo, who lines up at right end, came crashing across First from his Hobart side and almost RPI caught Denham in the backfield at the 47. But Denham was kind of sort of able to do a cutback and get around him. And Conquo very frustrated talking to the ref because he thinks he was held. He thinks his left arm was held as he was trying to reach out and grab Denham behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, it's not a play that we can see uh, anything obvious from way up here. But boy, Amici was really frustrated and talking to the ref after that play. He thought he was grabbed and prevented from making that tackle. All the receivers to the left this time, along with the running back. Cruising out of the shotgun. First and 10, Hobart at the 49. Hobart leads by five. Cruising keeps it, Cruising and he's going to lose game. yards back to the 49-yard line. line. And is center. he hurt? He is down and not getting up right away. And we're going to have a timeout. Uh, Cruising really Second got crunched there. I, I thought it was Deptula who came flying in. Turn I believe three. so. There's about three guys who hit him. But I think Deptula was among the first to get there. And it's at the 49 now, uh, out on the field and throwing the ball around to get loose is Johnny Columbi. He is a sophomore, 6'3", 200. He's the backup quarterback, and he has had some action this year since, not today, of course, he's not been in this game, but he has been out there uh, in a bunch of games for Hobart. He has 17 pass completions for 36, out of 36, rather, including for one touchdown, and he's getting loose uh, kind of near the far sideline throwing the ball because it looks like He's going to have to come in at least at least for a one play. play, and I'm suspecting more. Yeah, because Cruson is down on his back, and um, he's got one leg lifted. He's got his right knee up, and they're talking to him down on the ground. And he's he is moving. It's not that he's not moving at all, um, but he's he's not moving much. And it looks like he's going to have to be out for a bit here. Now he's up on his feet and headed toward the sideline with some applause. And he's, he's getting off to the sideline okay. No, maybe it's just, you know, really a hard hit. Uh, you know, hit the ground hard with his head, maybe knocked the wind out of him. It didn't look like he was limping or any kind of problem with a knee or ankle or anything like that. But he does have to come out right now, and Columbia yeah. is going to be in. And somebody just spoke to him, and now he's going back. I think they're actually going to take a look at him. So it's second down and 12 for Hobart at their own 49. A little over five to go here, fourth quarter, 13 to eight, Hobart leads. And Boswell gets the handoff. Boswell tries to turn this one upfield, does, and keeps taking people with him, keeps taking people with him, and he's Boswell close to a first down. Carry. And a flag comes flying flag in late. Flag on the play. Ray Sean Boswell, wow, that's a big play there. He dragged RPI defenders, what, seven, eight yards? Uh, maybe more. Yeah. Uh, but the, the flag is getting positioned uh, back near the 50. It might be go Hobart. This might be coming be, back. Yeah, Hobart offense seems to be backing up here as we wait for the call. That would be a nice break for RPI because if there's no flag, you'd be looking at third and less than a yard for the Statesman. Referees huddled up on the side. We don't have a call yet. If this comes back, it's that was a good run by Boswell. That was a lot of effort there. It's a shame if you don't get credit for that. We've got no signal to the crowd yet, but Hobart's offense is backing up all the way to its 38. They're talking to Ralph Izerny right now. The referee is talking to Ralph Izerny about what he wants to do. Well, if it's a choice, you got to take the penalty because otherwise it's, it's third down and half a yard at the RPI, 39 and a half. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 63 on the offense. 15-yard penalty, replay second down. Unnecessary so. roughness on 63, Ben Frank, one of the linemen Personal we mentioned. There's been a lot of chippy Hobart. play in the second half, a lot of entanglements between the Hobart 
offensive lineman and the defensive RPI after the play or amid the play here in this fourth quarter. So that's Penalty 15 yards against Hobart. To the 36 if that factors yard into line. the final score of the game, that's an unforced error. Uh, it could be second down at 25. In, costly. So the ball's back at the 36 for what is a second and about 25. 20, about 25, yeah. Second and 25 for Hobart back at the 36 yard line. That is Columbia in there. And the handoff Boswell to Boswell, he's going to lose yards. He's, he got knocked back. Line Noyes came in Connor and took Noyes. him back to the 33. Connor Noyes, one of the linebackers for RPI, just burst through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. Tackled for a loss, and now well, they give him a benefit of a, a, a yard. Put it at the 33. So now about 28 yards Third to go. Third down and 28. Down. Yeah, we can call it 28. So that's Cruson coming back in, right? The quarterback who was injured yes. kind of. Cruson has just re-entered the game. Columbia is out. Third down and 28 at the 33. They go on the ground. Boswell gets hit right near the Boswell line of scrimmage, the and he'll carry. be tackled there. Stop for Sicard, no game. 94, among others, making the grab, not allowing him to get anywhere off that right side. And okay. so RPI is going to force a punt here. 3.25 to go in the game. RPI has all three timeouts. Hobart does too. Uh, but right now, Hobart can wait until there's less than three minutes Hobart to go before punting this ball. Line. They will be punting into the wind. Uh, it looks like it's slowed down a hair from what it was about 10 or 15 minutes ago. But uh, the last punt that Weffering tried, Ryan remember, it only Walker went 19 or 20 feet. yards. And he's got to punt into that wind again. So we'll see what happens if he can fare better this time. Snap back, kick is away, and it's going to roll and go out of bounds near the RPI 30. Walker Sutton Fun did not want to at the touch RPI that, so line. RPI gets it at the 30-yard line. 2.50 to go, fourth quarter, Hobart 13, RPI 8. Didn't get high up in the air at all, probably hitting on the ground at about the 42 and got another 12 yards of roll. So it ends up being an effective punt. RPI now 70 yards away with two minutes and 50 seconds to go. They're down by five, so it has to be a touchdown if they're to win this game. First and 10, RPI at their own 30. Hobart burned almost five minutes off the clock on that previous drive. And on the ground, he's going to get on much. The carry. Maybe a yard for RPI one on, on the first play. down. Second down and nine. So Burnett Second only gets Romano. about a yard. 2.35 to go in the game. Engineers trailing by five. Time running out on them. Four wide out formation. Kazanowski looking downfield. Has to throw short. Burnett has it. Burnett's to the 38. Pass is complete to Burnett. Maybe between the 38 and the 39. The Sets up a third and about one and a half. No, 32. Line. They're going to call it 38 yard line. Third down and so two. So we're on the 205 to go in the game. RPI third and two with the 38. Obviously, it's four down territory, regardless of where you are on the field at this point for RPI. Third down. Kazagnowski throws. He's got a man along the far sideline. That's Walker That's Sutton. He's out in our Hobart Sutton. side of the field. He's out of bounds at the 48 of Hobart. A nice route by Walker Sutton, went about 12 Hobart, yards yard on the far line. side First and then just and cut to the sideline, got behind the quarterback, made the catch and gets out of bounds. Importantly, they're at the 48, uh, 152 to go in this ball game. Four wideouts, three to the left, one to the right for RPI. First and 10 at the 48 of Hobart. Pass and that is incomplete Passes over incomplete. the middle. It's Meissner, Second 11 the intended 10. receiver, yeah. Yeah, and he had a defender draped all over him, Bliss, and the RPI sideline wanted uh, pass interference because it looked like Bliss was all over Meisner's back as the ball was coming in. But no call, second down and 10 from the 48. Clock stop with 1.48 to go. Again, RPI trailing by five. They need a touchdown. Three receivers left, one right. Gasnowski out of the shotgun. He's going to dish it off short, caught off a tip by Burnett, and he's going to get stopped at the Burnett 46. For However, two. he was probably better off dropping yep. it. 
<laughs> because they only got maybe a yard and the clock and runs. The clock runs. And eight. Mm -hmm. uh, a drop pass there would have been better. So third down and nine, 125 to go. Hobart's been rushing just three guys. They've just had the linebackers back in coverage. Gazignowski. Burnett stays in the block. He throws over the middle, wide open. Palmer has got the touchdown for off the eye. Has it complete, complete to the 31. That's a first down. Palmer. Minute 12. Again, what we're seeing is Hobart just line. rushing three guys. First Everybody else kind of dropping RPI. back in sort of a zone coverage. Palmer found a pocket in the middle of the field at the 31. Hobart calls a timeout with 107 to go. Hobart. So again, 107 to go. Hobart leading by five, timeout. 13 to eight. Hobart. RPI has it first and 10 at the Hobart 31. RPI will mention the wind is with them, so they won't, they'll won't. they be throwing with the wind. That will help a bit as you try to move down the field here. Um, you know, the engineers have not gone deep much all day except for the touchdown pass to Palmer on the last possession. Uh, what else have they looked for? They've thrown a lot of short screen passes. Sometimes they look for the little 10 or 15 and out to Walker Sutton on the sideline. After a blasé first half, we have excitement here in the second half. Sterling Walker, 49 yards receiving Palmer, 45. They've been their two deep threats. Other than that, it's been short passes to Burnett or Buckley. 107 on the clock, RPI down by five. First and 10 at the Hobart 31. Engineers, two receivers each side. Burnett in the backfield. More pressure this time. Kazignowski throws, finds Burnett to 25. Burnett near the Kazanowski 20. That could be another first down if Burnett. it is, stops the clock. Gain of 10. Hobart yes. showed more pressure that time, first sending an extra 10, rusher, and there was pressure on Kazanowski, but he got it away. So it's a first down to 20. Clock stops, now it's starting. 54 seconds left to go. Handoff to Burnett on first down, and he'll get Burnett stopped at the, the 17, and RPI Inside calls a timeout. RPI calls a timeout. 46 seconds left. And Ralph Izernia wants timeout. maybe two or three RPI. more seconds on the clock. The first <laughs> he line. was out signaling for the timeout and Number jumping nine, up and Blake down Hansen. excitedly trying to get him to stop the clock. Well, a, a couple of seconds did roll off. Anyway, it's going to be timeout, the ball at the 46, or rather at the 17 with 46 seconds to go. So now you're in a position where you've got some options. You can throw to the end zone uh, any t on any of these downs. You could try to just keep nudging it down the field. It might depend on a little, obviously, it's going to depend on who's open and what kind of pressure Kazanowski's under. So far, early in that drive, Hobart was content to just rush three and drop everybody else back in zone coverage. Now that the ball's on their side of the field, they've been sending an extra pass rusher to try to hurry Kazanowski. Timeout is over. Second and six RPI at the Hobart 17. Engineers trail by five. 46 seconds left. Two receivers each side. Burnett in the backfield. Kazignowski shotgun. Gets the snap. Three-man rush. Pass. That is complete to Palmer. Palmer inside the 10. Palmer's got another first down at the, nine, at the eight. Let's call it the eight yard the line. yard line. Clock stops, 39 seconds to go. Tackled by number 28. Palmer and Walker Sutton, the two First favorite receivers for, for Kazanowski. So far, one's on the near side left, the far, other far side right. First and goal from the eight. Kazanowski throws, it's complete to Palmer, touchdown! RPI touchdown. takes a 14 to 13 RPI. lead. A terrific read by not only Palmer, but Kazanowski. He was the lone guy on the left side, the near side. Everybody else was on the right. And Palmer, and one of them recognized it. Obviously, Palmer just ran a quick, hard slant from the far side towards the hash mark. Kazanowski delivers the ball right at the one yard line, and he's able to shuck off the defender. That was number one, Diallo, who was holding onto the back of Palmer, but Palmer able to make the grab right short of the goal line and carry it in and RPI is now leading 14 to 13, 24 seconds to go. RPI going for two. One doesn't get you anything at this point. So RPI going for two. Kazignowski takes a snap. Under pressure, he's going to run. Kazignowski is in for the two-point conversion. 
The try is good. He was looking right. Kazanowski. He was looking Kazanowski. right. Kazanowski. The pocket broke down. Run. He just stepped up in it and saw an opening to the left. Wide open field and just scrambled all the way in, kind of running at a slant to his left and got in just before he was brought down a yard into the end zone. An eight and yard what a job pass for from number 19, Jake Kazanowski. And the RPI offense. So number four, After sputtering through Palmer. the entire first half, two touchdown two drives try here late in the game, and they now lead it 16 to 13. 24 seconds left. 24 seconds to go. There's going to be a the fourth kickoff. Quarter. But uh, the score, RPI look forward 16. to what Hobart, Hobart might run. 15. Let's remember, Kurt, Krusen has burned RPI on some long passes down the sideline. He's hit a couple for a touchdown and a couple of times overthrown receivers when it might have been touchdowns. So they know what has worked against this RPI defense. We'll see what they try to do and, and, and also where they're positioned to start this final drive. They'll, RPI will be kicking off into the wind. So do you tell and, Merrick and to go for the touchback or do you want absolutely. him? Absolutely. I think so. I think you bury them back as far as you can because they're going to be throwing into the wind here. And uh, you want to push this, you want to make them start as far back as you can on this possession. Merrick boots it. It goes into the end zone, and this will be a touchback. So Hobart, with 24 Pick seconds off, left, will start out at their own 25. Touchback. And they need, well, no, Hobart they can get a field goal, but the field goal line. range right now is going to be shorter based on the wind. Yeah, they're going to be going into the wind. Now, you know, they've got some big targets out there. LaBella has follow, made a couple of big catches, as has Darryl Mola, 38-yard touchdown and a 33-yard touchdown. Marcus Lenz is 6'1". He's a tough receiver RPI on the outside. And also, the big guy, Peyton Kay, hasn't had a catch uh, all afternoon, but he's 6'5", and he could be a target here for Krusen as well. Hobart at their own 25, down by three with 24 seconds left. They have two timeouts. Three receiver formation. Krusen drops back, three-man rush. Well, there's four kind of floating around. Pass, that is complete to the 47, and it's Pass caught there by Daramola. There's 17 seconds left. They're now out to the about the 46 the of RPI. RPI oh, put, put, me on the the side, RPI line, RPI put almost Hobart. no rush there to Krusen. Uh, they were playing very cautiously, and Krusen was back in the pocket and had time to scan the field and find Daramola on the right sideline all the way out to the 46. We'll see if they stick with that, which is, which is a soft pass rush, which is what we saw in that last play. First and 10 at the 46, 17 seconds left for Hobart. Three receiver formation, tight end on the left. Single man coverage on either side. Brucin looking to throw, keeps looking left, keeps looking left. Davis almost intercepted. Pass almost taken incomplete. away by Davis. It goes incomplete, 11 seconds left. He over, Krusen overthrew his Broken receiver, Daramola, down at the 32, Davis. and Davis Second got a hand on it at 10. the 31, uh, but couldn't corral it. So another chance for Hobart, clock down now to 11 seconds. Ball at the Hobart 46. It's RPI 16, Hobart 13. Eleven seconds left. It is second and ten. The downs don't matter as much anymore when you're just short of time. Crusade gets it off, and that's complete. Pass is and that is complete. to Denham, and he's out at the RPI 45 with seven two, seconds Denham. to go. All right, so seven seconds. At One play, RPI maybe two plays. You got uh, the timeout, so yeah. Third down. You either go for the bomb right here downfield, or you go for a quick out to just bring it a little bit closer, which is probably what I would suspect. Um, because they're running into the wind. So you might want to try a short pass here. But who knows? They're lined up too wide on the left. RPI on the right. just called a timeout. Timeout, RPI. Timeout. RPI. It's their second yep. charge. Can't take it with you. <laughs> they want to make sure that everything Fans is. Reminder, there's no miscommunication here. We ask here everyone to stay off the playing field at all times this afternoon. The last or Please the second to last the play of, of regulation. Yeah, so. The game is over. Thank you. If you're. Hobart, the players need to kind of be aware of how much time is left if they're in a position where they can't get downfield. Drop to the ground and get a timeout called. You, you kind of need to be aware of that so you can get another snap. Yeah, you've got to, 
you, you've got to either throw the home ball, home run ball and go to the end zone or just a quick out pass to get out of bounds, just getting a little closer for the what would be then the final play. Okay, so. Especially watch the near receiver here. Uh, if, if Cruson looks for that quick out because he's got a lane to a receiver on the near side. Third down and one. Cruson's going to look near side and goes through the hands of the intended receiver. That was Denham. Four seconds to go. Fourth down, but it's probably the last play anyway, barring a defensive penalty. This basically takes the field goal off the board. They are way too far out. Right. And uh, that's Denim, that's what we suspected they might try as a short out pass on the near side. They were looking for Denim at the 40. Uh, ball just kind of delivered with a lot of mustard and went right through his hands uh, and out of bounds. And so that's where the last play will take place, well, barring a penalty. Um, at the RPI 45, it's the near side hash mark. Hobart is going left to right, north to south, in what has been a pretty stiff win here all of the second half. So that, that could factor in here as well. Um, you got to imagine they'll just throw it up, the Hail Mary, the jump ball. You, I wonder if they'll put in Preston K. He's a big 6'5 receiver. We haven't seen him on any of the last few downs here, rather Peyton K. I got to imagine they're going to be just throwing all of their tallest guys out there for the Hail Mary attempt in the south end zone on what should be the final play of the ball game. 16 to 13, RPI leads Hobart, just four seconds remaining. The ball is sitting at the RPI 45, Hobart going left to right. Three receivers on the left, they've got a tight end on the right. Person out of the shotgun, Denham stays in the block. Cruson is backing up, backing up, throwing end zone. It's not going to make it that far. It's going to hit somebody short. I, it's incomplete. It's incomplete. Incomplete. Complete. Game over. RPI Time wins 16-13. Game is over. Final chop, score. Chop win for RPI. RPI. 16, Just to go over that last play. Again, Hobart, Cruson had three 13. receivers left, and I think the win did factor in there because he tried to just haul off and throw it as far as he could, and it was going to be short anyway. It was down at about the six-yard line is where the jump ball took place. Nobody came down with it. Instead, it hits the ground, and it's an incomplete pass, and the ball game is over. And what an exciting finish. Um, RPI up 2-0 at the half. Hobart rallies for consecutive touchdowns at the end of the third and start of the fourth quarter. They're up 13-2, looking like they have it locked down when the RPI offense, which had been – Frustrated all afternoon, not able to get into the end zone. Uh, puts together two drives for two scores, both of them coming on passes from Kazanowski to DJ Palmer. Uh, in the late in the fourth quarter, RPI two touchdowns, and uh, along with a, a two point conversion at the end, making the final score 16 to 13. A big, big win for RPI. They stay unbeaten in conference at 3 and 0 and now we'll be headed towards a showdown in Ithaca in two weeks against the Ithaca Bombers, a team that right now everyone considers to be the favorite to win this conference. Ithaca with a 9-0 lead at the half over St. Lawrence. Uh, so they are still in action today. Uh, and of course, Ithaca is playing next week as well. Right. So Ithaca will have a game next week before RPI faces them. They could be Two and two, they could be four and zero. We we don't know what Ithaca is going to be. RPI will be three and zero going into Ithaca in two weeks. But you look at those drives. RPI didn't get anywhere, and then I believe in the fourth quarter, did RPI get it at the thirty-four? I believe so. Yeah, they got it yeah. at the thirty-four of Hobart. Well, you know that the the oh. win became a factor here at the end too, right? It was thirteen to two, Hobart's leading. Uh, they had the ball deep in their own territory. They ran three straight plays trying to run clock, so they had to punt. But they were punting from the line of scrimmage of the 14, and with the wind really blowing, uh, Weffering, the punter, only got it off 20 yards. So RPI took over at the 34, which gave them a lot of momentum to score that right. first touchdown. Right, so they got the short field, and the other drive was 70 yards. Mm -hmm. That was the 30 yard, so they got it on the 30, and they had to drive 70 yards in order to get the TD. That was the longest drive of the game, by the way, scoring drive was RPI's final drive, the 70-yard drive, to get the touchdown. And, and to break it down a little bit, what happened at the start of that drive, RPI began on its own side of the field, and Hobart was kind of playing almost that prevent style of defense where they were not putting up much of a rush and they were dro dropping everybody back in zone coverage. But all that did was allow RPI to just tick, 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 move the ball down a field 
uh, into Hobart territory. So RPI's offense puts it together late. Uh, 7.44 to go and then 24 seconds to go is when they scored the two touchdowns. If you're, if you're Hobart, the probably difficult part of this one is they got the ball with 7.44 to go and wasted almost five minutes of clock time. But yeah. RPI still came back. Yeah. Yeah. They, they couldn't take enough time off the clock. Uh, if they had taken another minute off the clock, they probably would have won the game. Even maybe another 30 seconds because RPI scored 24 to go. If they take another 30 seconds off the clock on that drive, maybe they win this game. They just didn't get enough clock time off in that almost five-minute drive that didn't net them anything except getting rid of clock. Well, and that was the thing. That's a, Look, hey, running five minutes off of the clock when you're ahead 13 to 8, at, at the time it might have felt like just enough for Hobart. But like we said, they – RPI gets the ball, and, and Hobart kind of plays soft defense. And all of a sudden, three or four passes later, RPI is well down the field to set up uh, the touchdown pass to, to DJ Palmer. So, it, you know, this one was like, <laughs> just what a crazy game in a way. It was, it was like, two different games. It was the first half where the neither offense, well, RPI could have scored a touchdown in the first half. Let's remember they had two good drives. One ended in a fumble, one in an interception. They went to the halftime locker room leading two to nothing when it felt like they should have had at least a nine to nothing lead there. And, and for a while it looked like they were going to regret that, that that was going to be the failures in the first half was going to be part of the reason why they'd lose this game because they gave up two touchdowns to Hobart and all of a sudden was down 13 to two in the fourth quarter, halfway through the fourth quarter, and, and they were doing nothing on offense in the second half. So I'm going to run down the scoring in today's game. Yancey has to pick his engineers of the game. There was no scoring in the first quarter of today's game and barely any scoring in the second quarter. There was one score. Uh, 108 to go in the first half. A safety. RPI got a safety because Hobart snapped the ball. It went past Boswell, who was in the QB position at the time, went to the goal line and ended up getting kicked out of the end zone. And that was a safety for RPI. And the teams went into the locker room with RPI leading 2 nothing. With 3.02 left to go in the third, uh, Cruising to Labella with a 38-yard touchdown pass. Put Hobart up 6-2. The pass on the conversion failed. And then with 12.51 to go in the game, Cruising to Daramola. Did I get that pronounced? Yeah, I got, I got that right. 33 yards. Weffering with the kick made it 13-2 to in Hobart's favor. If you were an engineer fan and you were here, there's 12.51 to go. RPI's offense hadn't done anything. It was looking grim at that point. But then we talked about RPI got the short field. They got the ball to 34 of Hobart, and they quickly put it in with 7.44 to go. Kazagnowski hit Palmer on a 29-yard touchdown pass. The rush attempt failed on the conversion, so it was 13-8 Hobart at that point. Hobart took almost five minutes off the clock on the drive. They didn't score. They punted. RPI got it at the 30. And with 24 seconds left, they scored a touchdown. Kazanowski to Palmer, eight yards. And Kazanowski with the rush on the conversion made it a 16-3 score in RPI's favor. Hobart got the ball back but couldn't make it downfield. And it was a final today, RPI 16 and Hobart 13. RPI improving to 5-2 and two on the season, 3-0 and oh in the conference. Hobart falling to 3-3 three and three on the season, 0-2 oh in the conference. That effectively eliminates you. There would be, have to be some sort of bizarre... Massive four and two multiple team ties, and you'd have to win the tiebreaker, and that's probably not going to happen at this point. So, Hobart, not technically, but effectively eliminated from the league title at this point. For Hobart, they are at St. Lawrence next Saturday. That's a 1 p.m. start. For RPI, they are off next week, and on the 29th, they are at Ithaca for a 1 p.m. start. Your engineers of the game? Well, we'll start on defense. They dominated so much of that first oh, two and a half quarters, and they really had a terrific day. Uh, all in all, a lot of guys, good afternoons. But it's definitely Joe Deptula uh, led the engineers with 12 tackles, by far the leader in that category for the engineers, followed by Conquo with eight. Uh, offensively, boy, they were challenged for so much of the afternoon, weren't they? But one of the guys who really came through in that fourth quarter, DJ Palmer. He finished the ball game with four receptions for 62 yards and two touchdowns. He scored both of their touchdowns, and he caught the final two passes of the afternoon for RPI, uh, the nine-yard catch, which then set up the touchdown on their final offensive play, uh, quick slant from the near sideline, fighting off a defender, making the catch at the goal line, and getting in for the score, DJ Palmer, your offensive player of the day for Rensselaer. 
And that will do it for us here from the East Campus Stadium. Again, a tale of two games. If you only listened to the first half and just tuned in late, a much more exciting second half, especially the last 20 minutes of playtime, really. Uh, it was, it, it, the, the game came alive at the very end and took a 2 nothing game and made it a 16-13 to game at, uh, the way it turned out. Uh, around the league, they've started the third quarter. Ithaca now has a 15 to nothing lead on St. Lawrence. And Rochester defeated Buffalo State 12-6. to And those are your out-of-town games. Union is not playing this week. Uh, so those are your scores from out-of-town. Uh, thank yous. We'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute. And that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. Also, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browse to WRPI.org. And you can pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As long as we're sending something out over the air, we're providing for you on that feed. That's WRPI.org. Our next sports broadcast tonight, 7 o'clock at the Houston Fieldhouse. They drop the puck, RPI versus Army in men's hockey. And football in two weeks. That's a 1 p.m. start two weeks from today on October 29th. It'll be RPI at Ithaca which is gearing up to be a big game in the Liberty League. Uh, loser is in, whoever loses that game is not going to be in good shape down the stretch. Winner is in better shape. Uh, well, every week it's like someone now getting kind of knocked out of the race. As you mentioned, Hobart effectively knocked out of the race today, um, mathematically alive, but really technically out of it. Now, you, now you're down to three teams, Union, RPI, and Ithaca. Uh, looking at them in terms of who's going to emerge as the conference winner. And a big matchup, of course, then two weeks from now uh, in Ithaca. So we'd like to thank Will Dunn back at the station for making me sure we got out over the air. Yancey Rory was to my right. My name's Kurt Stutt. We would like to thank you for listening to today's game. The final score here from the East Campus Stadium this afternoon in Liberty League football action, it was RPI 16 and Hobart 13. And you've been listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI, Troy.